The Book of Jasher, the R.H. Charles Translation. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. And God created man in his own image. And God formed man from the ground, and he blew into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul, endowed with speech. And the Lord said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make unto him a helpmeet. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took away one of his ribs, and he built flesh upon it, and formed it, and brought it to Adam. And Adam awoke from his sleep, and behold, a woman was standing before him. And he said, This is a bone of my bones, and it shall be called woman, for this has been taken from man. And Adam called her name Eve, for she was the mother of all living. And God blessed them, and called their names Adam and Eve, in the day that he created them. And the Lord God said, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the earth. And the Lord God took Adam and his wife, and he placed them in the garden of Eden, to dress it, and to keep it. And he commanded them, and said unto them, From every tree of the garden you may eat, but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat thereof you shall surely die. And when God had blessed and commanded them, he went from them, and Adam and his wife dwelt in the garden according to the command which the Lord had commanded them. And the serpent, which God had created with them in the earth, came to them to incite them to transgress the command of God which he had commanded them. And the serpent enticed and persuaded the woman to eat from the tree of knowledge, and the woman hearkened to the voice of the serpent, and she transgressed the word of God, and took from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and she ate, and she took from it, and gave also to her husband, and he ate. And Adam and his wife transgressed the command of God, which he had commanded them, and God knew it, and his anger was kindled against them, and he cursed them. And the Lord God drove them that day from the garden of Eden to till the ground from which they were taken, and they went and dwelt at the east of the garden of Eden. And Adam knew his wife Eve, and she bore two sons and three daughters. And she called the name of the firstborn Cain, saying, I have obtained a man from the Lord, and the name of the other she called Abel, for she said, In vanity we came into the earth, and in vanity we shall be taken from it. And the boys grew up, and their father gave them a possession in the land, and Cain was a tiller of the ground, and Abel a keeper of sheep. And it was at the expiration of a few years that they brought an approximating offering to the Lord, and Cain brought from the fruit of the ground, and Abel brought from the firstlings of his flock from the fat thereof, and God turned and inclined to Abel and his offering, and a fire came down from the Lord from heaven, and consumed it. And unto Cain and his offering the Lord did not turn, and he did not incline to it, for he had brought from the inferior fruit of the ground before the Lord, and Cain was jealous against his brother Abel on account of this, and he sought a pretext to slay him. And in some time after, Cain and Abel his brother went one day into the field to do their work, and they were both in the field, Cain tilling and plowing his ground, and Abel feeding his flock. And the flock passed that part which Cain had plowed in the ground, and it sorely grieved Cain on this account. And Cain approached his brother Abel in anger, and he said unto him, What is there between me and thee, that thou comest to dwell and bring thy flock to feed in my land? And Abel answered his brother Cain, and said unto him, What is there between me and thee, that thou shalt eat the flesh of my flock, and clothe thyself with their wool? And now, therefore, put off the wool of my sheep, with which thou hast clothed thyself, and recompense me for their fruit and flesh which thou hast eaten. And when thou shalt have done this, I will then go from thy land, as thou hast said. And Cain said to his brother Abel, Surely, if I slay thee this day, who will require thy blood from me? And Abel answered Cain, saying, Surely God, who has made us in the earth, he will avenge my cause, and he will require my blood from thee, shouldst thou slay me. For the Lord is the judge and arbiter, and it is he who will requite man according to his evil, and the wicked man according to the wickedness that he may do upon earth. And now, if thou shouldest slay me here, surely God knoweth thy secret views, and will judge thee for the evil which thou didst declare to do unto me this day. And when Cain heard the words which Abel his brother had spoken, behold, the anger of Cain was kindled against his brother Abel for declaring this thing. 
And Cain hastened and rose up, and took the iron part of his plowing instrument, with which he suddenly smote his brother, and he slew him. And Cain spilt the blood of his brother Abel upon the earth, and the blood of Abel streamed upon the earth before the flock. And after this Cain repented having slain his brother, and he was sadly grieved, and he wept over him, and it vexed him exceedingly. And Cain rose up, and dug a hole in the field, wherein he put his brother's body, and he turned the dust over it. And the Lord knew what Cain had done to his brother. And the Lord appeared to Cain and said unto him, Where is Abel thy brother that was with thee? And Cain dissembled and said, I do not know, am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said unto him, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground where thou hast slain him. For thou hast slain thy brother, and hast dissembled before me, and didst imagine in thy heart that I saw thee not, nor knew all thy actions. But thou didst this thing, and didst slay thy brother for naught, and because he spoke rightly to thee. And now, therefore, cursed be thou from the ground which opened its mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand, and wherein thou didst bury him. And it shall be, when thou shalt till it, it shall no more give thee its strength as in the beginning. For thorns and thistles shall the ground produce, and thou shalt be moving and wandering in the earth until the day of thy death. And at that time Cain went out from the presence of the Lord, from the place where he was, and he went moving and wandering in the land toward the east of Eden, he and all belonging to him. And Cain knew his wife in those days, and she conceived and bare a son, and he called his name Enoch, saying, In that time the Lord began to give him rest and quiet in the earth. And at that time Cain also began to build a city, and he built the city, and he called the name of the city Enoch, according to the name of his son. For in those days the Lord had given him rest upon the earth, and he did not move about and wander as in the beginning. And Irad was born to Enoch, and Irad begat Mekuyael, and Mekuyael begat Methusael. Chapter 2 And it was in the hundred and thirtieth year of the life of Adam upon the earth that he again knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bare a son in his likeness and in his image, and she called his name Seth, saying, Because God has appointed me another seed in the place of Abel, for Cain has slain him. And Seth lived one hundred and five years, and he begat a son. And Seth called the name of his son Enosh, saying, Because in that time the sons of men began to multiply and afflict their souls and hearts by transgressing and rebelling against God. And it was in the days of Enosh, that the sons of men continued to rebel and transgress against God, to increase the anger of the Lord against the sons of men. And the sons of men went, and they served other gods, and they forgot the Lord who had created them in the earth. And in those days the sons of men made images of brass and iron, wood and stone, and they bowed down and served them. And every man made his god, and they bowed down to them, and the sons of men forsook the Lord all the days of Enosh and his children. And the anger of the Lord was kindled on account of their works and abominations which they did in the earth. And the Lord caused the waters of the river Gihon to overwhelm them, and he destroyed and consumed them, and he destroyed the third part of the earth. And notwithstanding this, the sons of men did not turn from their evil ways, and their hands were yet extended to do evil in the sight of the Lord. And in those days there was neither sowing nor reaping in the earth, and there was no food for the sons of men and the famine was very great in those days. And the seed which they sowed in those days in the ground became thorns, thistles, and briars. For from the days of Adam was this the declaration concerning the earth, and the curse of God, which he cursed the earth on account of the sin which Adam sinned before the Lord. And it was when men continued to rebel and transgress against God, and to corrupt their ways, that the earth also became corrupt. And Enosh lived ninety years, and he begat Canaan. And Canaan grew up, and he was forty years old, and he became wise, and had knowledge and skill in all wisdom. And he reigned over all the sons of men, and he led the sons of men to wisdom and knowledge. For Canaan was a very wise man, and had understanding in all wisdom, and with his wisdom he ruled over spirits and demons. And Canaan knew by his wisdom that God would destroy the sons of men for having sinned upon earth, and that the Lord would in the latter days bring upon them the waters of the flood. And in those days Canaan wrote upon tablets of stone what was to take place in time to come, and he put them in his treasures. And Canaan reigned over the whole earth, 
and he turned some of the sons of men to the service of God. And when Canaan was seventy years old, he begat three sons and two daughters. And these are the names of the children of Canaan. The name of the firstborn, Malalel, the second, Enan, the third, Mered, and their sisters were Ada and Zillah. These are the five children of Canaan that were born to him. And Lamech, the son of Methusael, became related to Canaan by marriage, and he took his two daughters for his wives, and Ada conceived and bare a son to Lamech, and she called his name Jabal. And she again conceived and bare a son, and called his name Jubal, and Zillah, her sister, was barren in those days, and had no offspring. For in those days the sons of men began to trespass against God, and to transgress the commandments which he had commanded to Adam, to be fruitful and multiply in the earth. And some of the sons of men caused their wives to drink a draught that would render them barren, in order that they might retain their figures, and whereby their beautiful appearance might not fade. And when the sons of men caused some of their wives to drink, Zillah drank with them. And the child-bearing women appeared abominable in the sight of their husbands, as widows, whilst their husbands lived, for to the barren ones only they were attached. And in the end of days and years, when Zillah became old, the Lord opened her womb, and she conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Tubal Cain, saying, After I had withered away, I have obtained him from the Almighty God. And she conceived again, and bare a daughter, and she called her name Naamah, for she said, After I had withered away, have I obtained pleasure and delight. And Lamech was old and advanced in years, and his eyes were dim that he could not see, and Tubal Cain, his son, was leading him, and it was one day that Lamech went into the field, and Tubal Cain, his son, was with him, and whilst they were walking in the field, Cain, the son of Adam, advanced towards them. For Lamech was very old and could not see much, and Tubal Cain, his son, was very young. And Tubal Cain told his father to draw his bow, and with the arrows he smote Cain, who was yet far off, and he slew him, for he appeared to them to be an animal. And the arrows entered Cain's body, although he was distant from them, and he fell to the ground and died. And the Lord requited Cain's evil according to his wickedness, which he had done to his brother Abel, according to the word of the Lord which he had spoken. And it came to pass, when Cain had died, that Lamech and Tubal went to see the animal which they had slain, and they saw, and behold, Cain, their grandfather, was fallen dead upon the earth. And Lamech was very much grieved at having done this, and in clapping his hands together, he struck his son and caused his death. And the wives of Lamech heard what Lamech had done, and they sought to kill him. And the wives of Lamech hated him from that day, because he slew Cain and Tubal Cain, and the wives of Lamech separated from him and would not hearken to him in those days. And Lamech came to his wives, and he pressed them to listen to him about this matter. And he said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, Hear my voice, O wives of Lamech. Attend to my words, for now you have imagined and said that I slew a man with my wounds and a child with my stripes for their having done no violence. But surely know that I am old and gray-headed and that my eyes are heavy through age and I did this thing unknowingly. And the wives of Lamech listened to him in this matter and they returned to him with the advice of their father Adam. But they bore no children to him from that time, knowing that God's anger was increasing in those days against the sons of men to destroy them with the waters of the flood for their evil doings. And Malalel, the son of Canaan, lived sixty-five years, and he begat Jared. And Jared lived sixty-two years, and he begat Enoch. Chapter 3 And Enoch lived sixty-five years, and he begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after having begot Methuselah, and he served the Lord, and despised the evil ways of men. And the soul of Enoch was wrapped up in the instruction of the Lord, in knowledge and in understanding. And he wisely retired from the sons of men, and secreted himself from them for many days. And it was at the expiration of many years, whilst he was serving the Lord and praying before him in his house, that an angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Rise, go forth from thy house, and from the place where thou dost hide thyself, and appear to the sons of men, in order that thou mayest teach them the way in which they should go, and the work which they must accomplish to enter in the ways of God. And Enoch rose up according to the word of the Lord, and went forth from his house, from his place, and from the chamber in which he was concealed. And he went to the sons of men, and taught them the ways of the Lord, 
and at that time assembled the sons of men and acquainted them with the instruction of the Lord. And he ordered it to be proclaimed in all places where the sons of men dwelt, saying, Where is the man who wishes to know the ways of the Lord and good works? Let him come to Enoch. And all the sons of men then assembled to him, for all who desired this thing went to Enoch. And Enoch reigned over the sons of men according to the word of the Lord. And they came and bowed to him, and they heard his word. And the Spirit of God was upon Enoch, and he taught all men the wisdom of God and his ways. And the sons of men served the Lord all the days of Enoch, and they came to hear his wisdom. And all the kings of the sons of men, both first and last, together with their princes and judges, came to Enoch when they heard of his wisdom, and they bowed down to him, and they also required of Enoch to reign over them, to which he consented. And they assembled in all one hundred and thirty kings and princes, and they made Enoch king over them, and they were all under his power and command. And Enoch taught them wisdom, knowledge, and the ways of the Lord, and he made peace amongst them, and peace was throughout the earth during the life of Enoch. And Enoch reigned over the sons of men two hundred and forty-three years, and he did justice and righteousness with all his people, and he led them in the ways of the Lord. And these are the generations of Enoch, Methuselah, Elisha, and Elimelech, three sons, and their sisters were Melka, and Nama, and Methuselah, lived eighty-seven years, and he begat Lamech. And it was in the fifty-sixth year of the life of Lamech, when Adam died, nine hundred and thirty years old was he at his death, and his two sons, with Enoch and Methuselah his son, buried him with great pomp, as at the burial of kings, in the cave which God had told him. And in that place all the sons of men made a great mourning and weeping on account of Adam. It has therefore become a custom among the sons of men to this day. And Adam died, because he ate of the tree of knowledge, he and his children after him, as the Lord God had spoken. And it was in the year of Adam's death, which was the two hundred and forty-third year of the reign of Enoch. In that time Enoch resolved to separate himself from the sons of men, and to secret himself, as at first, in order to serve the Lord. And Enoch did so, but did not entirely secret himself from them, but kept away from the sons of men three days, and then went to them for one day. And during the three days that he was in his chamber, he prayed to and praised the Lord his God. And the day on which he went and appeared to his subjects, he taught them the ways of the Lord, and all they asked him about the Lord, he told them. And he did in this manner for many years, and afterward he concealed himself for six days, and appeared to his people one day in seven. And after that, once in a month, and then, once in a year, until all the kings, princes, and sons of men sought for him, and desired again to see the face of Enoch, and to hear his word, but they could not, as all the sons of men were greatly afraid of Enoch, and they feared to approach him on account of the godlike awe that was seated upon his countenance. Therefore no man could look at him, fearing he might be punished and die. And all the kings and princes resolved to assemble the sons of men, and to come to Enoch, thinking that they might all speak to him at the time when he should come forth amongst them, and they did so. And the day came when Enoch went forth, and they all assembled and came to him, and Enoch spoke to them the words of the Lord, and he taught them wisdom and knowledge, and they bowed down before him, and they said, May the king live, may the king live. And in some time after, when the kings and princes and the sons of men were speaking to Enoch, and Enoch was teaching them the ways of God, Behold, an angel of the Lord then called unto Enoch from heaven, and wished to bring him up to heaven, to make him reign there over the sons of God, as he had reigned over the sons of men upon earth. When at that time Enoch heard this, he went and assembled all the inhabitants of the earth, and taught them wisdom and knowledge, and gave them divine instructions, and he said to them, I have been required to ascend into heaven, I therefore do not know the day of my going. And now, therefore, I will teach you wisdom and knowledge, and will give you instruction before I leave you, how to act upon earth, whereby you may live. And he did so. And he taught them wisdom and knowledge, and gave them instruction, and he reproved them, and he placed before them statutes and judgments to do upon earth, and made peace amongst them, and he taught them everlasting life, and dwelt with them some time, teaching them all these things. And at that time the sons of men were with Enoch, and Enoch was speaking to them, and they lifted up their eyes, and the likeness of a great horse descended from heaven, and the horse paced in the air. And they told Enoch what they had seen, and Enoch said to them, On my account does this horse descend upon earth. The time is come when I must go from you, and I shall no more be seen by you. 
And the horse descended at that time, and stood before Enoch, and all the sons of men that were with Enoch saw him. And Enoch then again ordered a voice to be proclaimed, saying, Where is the man who delighteth to know the ways of the Lord his God? Let him come this day to Enoch, before he is taken from us. And all the sons of men assembled and came to Enoch that day, and all the kings of the earth with their princes and counselors remained with him that day. And Enoch then taught the sons of men wisdom and knowledge, and gave them divine instruction, and he bade them serve the Lord, and walk in his ways all the days of their lives, and he continued to make peace amongst them. And it was after this that he rose up and rode upon the horse, and he went forth, and all the sons of men went after him, about eight hundred thousand men, and they went with him one day's journey. And the second day he said to them, Return home to your tents. Why will you go? Perhaps you may die. And some of them went from him, and those that remained went with him six days' journey. And Enoch said to them every day, Return to your tents, lest you may die. But they were not willing to return, and they went with him. And on the sixth day some of the men remained and clung to him, and they said to him, We will go with thee to the place where thou goest, as the Lord liveth, death only shall separate us. And they urged so much to go with him, that he ceased speaking to them. And they went after him, and would not return. And when the kings returned, they caused a census to be taken, in order to know the number of remaining men that went with Enoch. And it was upon the seventh day that Enoch ascended into heaven in a whirlwind, with horses and chariots of fire. And on the eighth day all the kings that had been with Enoch sent to bring back the number of men that were with Enoch in that place from which he had ascended into heaven. And all those kings went to the place, and they found the earth there filled with snow, and upon the snow were large stones of snow. And one said to the other, Come, let us break through the snow, and see perhaps the men that remained with Enoch are dead, and are now under the stones of snow. And they searched, but could not find him, for he had ascended into heaven. Chapter 4 And all the days that Enoch lived upon earth were three hundred and sixty-five years. And when Enoch had ascended into heaven, all the kings of the earth rose and took Methuselah, his son, and anointed him, and they caused him to reign over them in the place of his father. And Methuselah acted uprightly in the sight of God, as his father Enoch had taught him. And he likewise during the whole of his life taught the sons of men wisdom, knowledge, and the fear of God, and he did not turn from the good way, either to the right or to the left. But in the latter days of Methuselah, the sons of men turned from the Lord, they corrupted the earth, they robbed and plundered each other, and they rebelled against God, and they transgressed, and they corrupted their ways, and would not hearken to the voice of Methuselah, but rebelled against him. And the Lord was exceedingly wroth against them, and the Lord continued to destroy the seed in those days, so that there was neither sowing nor reaping in the earth. For when they sowed the ground in order that they might obtain food for their support, behold, thorns and thistles were produced which they did not sow. And still the sons of men did not turn from their evil ways, and their hands were still extended to do evil in the sight of God, and they provoked the Lord with their evil ways, and the Lord was very wroth, and repented that he had made man. And he thought to destroy and annihilate them, and he did so. In those days when Lamech the son of Methuselah was one hundred and sixty years old, Seth the son of Adam died. And all the days that Seth lived were nine hundred and twelve years, and he died. And Lamech was one hundred and eighty years old when he took Ashmua, the daughter of Elisha, the son of Enoch his uncle, and she conceived. And at that time the sons of men sowed the ground, and a little food was produced, yet the sons of men did not turn from their evil ways, and they trespassed and rebelled against God. And the wife of Lamech conceived and bare him a son at that time, at the revolution of the year. And Methuselah called his name Noah, saying, The earth was in his days at rest and free from corruption. And Lamech his father called his name Menachem, saying, This one shall comfort us in our works and miserable toil in the earth, which God had cursed. And the child grew up and was weaned, and he went in the ways of his father Methuselah, perfect and upright with God. And all the sons of men departed from the ways of the Lord in those days, as they multiplied upon the face of the earth with sons and daughters, and they taught one another their evil practices, and they continued sinning against the Lord. And every man made unto himself a god, and they robbed and plundered every man his neighbor, as well as his relative, and they corrupted the earth, and the earth was filled with violence. 
And their judges and rulers went to the daughters of men and took their wives by force from their husbands, according to their choice. And the sons of men in those days took from the cattle of the earth, the beasts of the field, and the fowls of the air, and taught the mixture of animals of one species with the other, in order therewith to provoke the Lord. And God saw the whole earth, and it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted its ways upon earth, all men and all animals. And the Lord said, I will blot out man that I created from the face of the earth, yea, from man to the birds of the air, together with cattle and beasts that are in the field, for I repent that I made them. And all men who walked in the ways of the Lord died in those days before the Lord brought the evil upon man which he had declared. For this was from the Lord, that they should not see the evil which the Lord spoke of concerning the sons of men. And Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord chose him and his children to raise up seed from them upon the face of the whole earth. Chapter 5 And it was in the eighty-fourth year of the life of Noah that Enoch the son of Seth died. He was nine hundred and five years old at his death. And in the one hundred and seventy-ninth year of the life of Noah, Canaan the son of Enosh died, and all the days of Canaan were nine hundred and ten years, and he died. And in the two hundred and thirty-fourth year of the life of Noah, Mahalalel, the son of Canaan, died, and the days of Mahalalel were eight hundred and ninety-five years, and he died. And Jared, the son of Mahalalel, died in those days, in the three hundred and thirty-sixth year of the life of Noah, and all the days of Jared were nine hundred and sixty-two years, and he died. And all who followed the Lord died in those days, before they saw the evil which God declared to do upon earth. And after the lapse of many years, in the four hundred and eightieth year of the life of Noah, when all those men who followed the Lord had died away from amongst the sons of men, and only Methuselah was then left, God said unto Noah and Methuselah, saying, Speak ye, and proclaim to the sons of men, saying, Thus said the Lord, Return from your evil ways, and forsake your works, and the Lord will repent of the evil that he declared to do to you, so that it shall not come to pass. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I give you a period of one hundred and twenty years. If you will turn to me and forsake your evil ways, then will I also turn away from the evil which I told you, and it shall not exist, saith the Lord. And Noah and Methuselah spoke all the words of the Lord to the sons of men, day after day, constantly speaking to them. But the sons of men would not hearken to them, nor incline their ears to their words, and they were stiff-necked. And the Lord granted them a period of one hundred and twenty years, saying, If they will return, then will God repent of the evil, so as not to destroy the earth. Noah, the son of Lamech, refrained from taking a wife in those days to beget children, for he said, Surely now God will destroy the earth, wherefore then shall I beget children? And Noah was a just man, he was perfect in his generation, and the Lord chose him to raise up seed from his seed upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Noah, Take unto thee a wife, and beget children, for I have seen thee righteous before me in this generation. And thou shalt raise up seed, and thy children with thee, in the midst of the earth. And Noah went and took a wife, and he chose Naamah, the daughter of Enoch, and she was five hundred and eighty years old. And Noah was four hundred and ninety-eight years old when he took Naamah for a wife. And Naamah conceived and bare a son, and he called his name Japheth, saying, God has enlarged me in the earth. And she conceived again, and bare a son, and he called his name Shem, saying, God has made me a remnant to raise up seed in the midst of the earth. And Noah was five hundred and two years old, when Naamah bare Shem, and the boys grew up, and went in the ways of the Lord, in all that Methuselah and Noah their father taught them. And Lamech, the father of Noah, died in those days, Yet verily he did not go with all his heart in the ways of his father, and he died in the hundred and ninety-fifth year of the life of Noah. And all the days of Lamech were seven hundred and seventy years, and he died. And all the sons of men who knew the Lord died in that year before the Lord brought evil upon them. For the Lord willed them to die, so as not to behold the evil that God would bring upon their brothers and relatives, as he had so declared to do. In that time the Lord said to Noah and Methuselah, Stand forth and proclaim to the sons of men all the words that I spoke to you in those days, peradventure they may turn from their evil ways, and I will then repent of the evil and will not bring it. 
And Noah and Methuselah stood forth, and said in the ears of the sons of men all that God had spoken concerning them. But the sons of men would not hearken, neither would they incline their ears to all their declarations. And it was after this that the Lord said to Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, on account of their evil deeds, and behold, I will destroy the earth. And do thou take unto thee gopher wood, and go to a certain place, and make a large ark, and place it in that spot. And thus shalt thou make it, three hundred cubits its length, fifty cubits broad, and thirty cubits high. And thou shalt make unto thee a door open at its side, and to a cubit thou shalt finish above, and cover it within and without with pitch. And behold, I will bring the flood of waters upon the earth, and all flesh be destroyed from under the heavens, all that is upon earth shall perish. And thou and thy household shall go and gather two couple of all living things, male and female, and shall bring them to the ark, to raise up seed from them upon earth. And gather unto thee all food that is eaten by all the animals, that there may be food for thee and for them. And thou shalt choose for thy sons three maidens from the daughters of men, and they shall be wives for thy sons. And Noah rose up, and he made the ark in the place where God had commanded him, and Noah did as God had ordered him. In his five hundred and ninety-fifth year, Noah commenced to make the ark, and he made the ark in five years, as the Lord had commanded. Then Noah took the three daughters of Eliakim, the son of Methuselah, for wives for his sons, as the Lord had commanded Noah. And it was at that time Methuselah, the son of Enoch, died. Nine hundred and sixty years old was he at his death. Chapter 6 At that time, after the death of Methuselah, the Lord said to Noah, Go thou with thy household into the ark. Behold, I will gather to thee all the animals of the earth, the beasts of the field, and the fowls of the air, and they shall all come and surround the ark. And thou shalt go and seat thyself by the doors of the ark, and all the beasts, the animals, and the fowls shall assemble and place themselves before thee, and such of them as shall come and crouch before thee shalt thou take and deliver into the hands of thy sons, who shall bring them to the ark, and all that will stand before thee thou shalt leave. And the Lord brought this about on the next day, and animals, beasts, and fowls came in great multitudes and surrounded the ark. And Noah went and seated himself by the door of the ark, and of all flesh that crouched before him, he brought into the ark, and all that stood before him he left upon earth. And a lioness came with her two whelps, male and female, and the three crouched before Noah. And the two whelps rose up against the lioness and smote her, and made her flee from her place, and she went away. And they returned to their places, and crouched upon the earth before Noah. And the lioness ran away, and stood in the place of the lions. And Noah saw this, and wondered greatly, and he rose and took the two whelps, and brought them into the ark. And Noah brought into the ark from all living creatures that were upon earth, so that there was none left but which Noah brought into the ark. Two and two came to Noah into the ark, but from the clean animals and the clean fowls he brought seven couples, as God had commanded him. And all the animals and beasts and fowls were still there, and they surrounded the ark at every place, and the rain had not descended till seven days after. And on that day the Lord caused the whole earth to shake, and the sun darkened, and the foundations of the world raged, and the whole earth was moved violently, and the lightning flashed, and the thunder roared, and all the fountains of the earth were broken up, such as was not known to the inhabitants before. And God did this mighty act in order to terrify the sons of men, that there might be no more evil upon earth. And still the sons of men would not return from their evil ways, and they increased the anger of the Lord at that time, and did not even direct their hearts to all this. And at the end of seven days, in the six hundredth year of the life of Noah, the waters of the flood were upon the earth, and all the fountains of the deep were broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened, and the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And Noah and his household and all the living creatures that were with him came into the ark on account of the waters of the flood, and the Lord shut him in. And all the sons of men that were left upon the earth became exhausted through evil on account of the rain, for the waters were coming more violently upon the earth, and the animals and beasts were still surrounding the ark. And the sons of men assembled together, about seven hundred thousand men and women, and they came unto Noah to the ark. And they called to Noah, saying, Open for us, that we may come to thee in the ark, and wherefore shall we die? 
And Noah, with a loud voice, answered them from the ark, saying, Have you not all rebelled against the Lord, and said that he does not exist? And therefore the Lord brought upon you this evil, to destroy and cut you off from the face of the earth. Is not this the thing that I spoke to you of, one hundred and twenty years back, and you would not hearken to the voice of the Lord, and now you desire to live upon earth? And they said to Noah, We are ready to return to the Lord, only open for us that we may live and not die. And Noah answered them, saying, Behold, now that you see the trouble of your souls, you wish to return to the Lord. Why did you not return during these hundred and twenty years, which the Lord granted you as the determined period? But now you come and tell me this, on account of the troubles of your souls. Now also the Lord will not listen to you, neither will he give ear to you on this day, so that you will not now succeed in your wishes. And the sons of men approached in order to break into the ark, to come in on account of the rain, for they could not bear the rain upon them. And the Lord sent all the beasts and animals that stood round the ark, and the beasts overpowered them, and drove them from that place, and every man went his way, and they again scattered themselves upon the face of the earth. And the rain was still descending upon the earth, and it descended forty days and forty nights, and the waters prevailed greatly upon the earth, and all flesh that was upon the earth or in the waters died, whether men, animals, beasts, creeping things, or birds of the air, and there only remained Noah and those that were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed, and they greatly increased upon the earth, and they lifted up the ark, and it was raised from the earth. And the ark floated upon the face of the waters, and it was tossed upon the waters, so that all the living creatures within were turned about like pottage in a cauldron. And great anxiety seized all the living creatures that were in the ark, and the ark was like to be broken. And all the living creatures that were in the ark were terrified, and the lions roared, and the oxen lowed, and the wolves howled, and every living creature in the ark spoke and lamented in its own language, so that their voices reached to a great distance, and Noah and his sons cried and wept in their troubles. They were greatly afraid that they had reached the gates of death. And Noah prayed unto the Lord, and cried unto him on account of this. And he said, O Lord, help us, for we have no strength to bear this evil that has encompassed us, for the waves of the waters have surrounded us, mischievous torrents have terrified us, the snares of death have come before us. Answer us, O Lord, answer us. Light up thy countenance towards us, and be gracious to us. Redeem us and deliver us. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Noah, and the Lord remembered him. And a wind passed over the earth, and the waters were still, and the ark rested. And the fountains of the deep, and the windows of heaven were stopped, and the rain from heaven was restrained. And the waters decreased in those days, and the ark rested upon the mountains of Ararat, and Noah opened the windows of the ark, and Noah still called out to the Lord at that time, and he said, O Lord, who didst form the earth, and the heavens, and all that are therein, bring forth our souls from this confinement, and from the prison wherein thou hast placed us, for I am much wearied with sighing. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Noah, and said to him, When thou shalt have completed a full year, thou shalt then go forth. And at the revolution of the year, when a full year was completed to Noah's dwelling in the ark, the waters were dried from off the earth, and Noah put off the covering of the ark. At that time, on the twenty-seventh day of the second month, the earth was dry, but Noah and his sons, and those that were with him, did not go out from the ark until the Lord told them. And the day came that the Lord told them to go out, and they all went out from the ark. And they went and returned every one to his way and to his place, and Noah and his sons dwelt in the land that God had told them, and they served the Lord all their days, and the Lord blessed Noah and his sons on their going out from the ark. And he said to them, Be fruitful and fill all the earth, become strong and increase abundantly in the earth, and multiply therein. Chapter 7 And these are the names of the sons of Noah, Japheth, Ham, and Shem. And children were born to them after the flood, for they had taken wives before the flood. These are the sons of Japheth, Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshech, and Tyrus, seven sons. And the sons of Gomer were Askenaz, Rephath, and Tergamah. And the sons of Magog were Elikanaf and Lubal. And the children of Madai were Akon, Zielo, Kazoni, and Lot. And the sons of Javan were Elisha, Tarshish, Kitim, and Dudanim, and the sons of Tubal were Arafai, Kesed, and Ta'ari. 
and the sons of Meshech were Dadon, Zeron, and Shabashni. And the sons of Tyrus were Benib, Gira, Lupirion, and Gilak. These are the sons of Japheth, according to their families, and their numbers in those days were about 460 men. And these are the sons of Ham, Cush, Mitzrayim, Phut, and Canaan, four sons. And the sons of Cush were Seba, Havilah, Sabta, Ra'ama, and Sateka. And the sons of Ra'ama were Sheba and Dadan. And the sons of Mitzrayim were Lud, Anam, and Pathros, Kasloth, and Kaphtor. And the sons of Phut were Gebu, Hadan, Bena, and Adan. And the sons of Canaan were Zidon, Heth, Amori, Gergashi, Hivi, Arki, Seni, Arodi, Zimodi, and Kamalti. These are the sons of Ham, according to their families, and their numbers in those days were about 730 men. And these are the sons of Shem, Elam, Ashur, Arpaxad, Lud, and Aram, five sons. And the sons of Elam were Shushan, Makul, and Harmon. And the sons of Ashar were Myrus and Mokil, and the sons of Arpaxad were Shilak, Anar, and Ashkal. And the sons of Lud were Pathor and Bizayon, and the sons of Aram were Uz, Kul, Gather, and Mash. These are the sons of Shem, according to their families, and their numbers in those days were about three hundred men. These are the generations of Shem. Shem begat Arpaxad, and Arpaxad begat Shelach, and Shelach begat Eber, and to Eber were born two children. The name of one was Peleg, for in his days the sons of men were divided, and in the latter days the earth was divided. And the name of the second was Yachtan, meaning that in his day the lives of the sons of men were diminished and lessened. These are the sons of Yachtan, Almodad, Shelaf, Kazarmaveth, Yurak, Hadaram, Ozel, Dikla, Obal, Abimael, Sheba, Ophir, Havilah, and Jobab. All these are the sons of Yoktan. And Peleg, his brother, begat Yen, and Yen begat Serug, and Serug begat Nahor, and Nahor begat Tira, and Tira was thirty-eight years old, and he begat Haran and Nahor. And Cush, the son of Ham, the son of Noah, took a wife in those days in his old age, and she bare a son, and they called his name Nimrod, saying, At that time the sons of men again begat to rebel and transgress against God, and the child grew up, and his father loved him exceedingly, for he was the son of his old age. And the garments of skin which God made for Adam and his wife when they went out of the garden were given to Cush. For after the death of Adam and his wife, the garments were given to Enoch, the son of Jared, and when Enoch was taken up to God, he gave them to Methuselah, his son. And at the death of Methuselah, Noah took them and brought them to the ark, and they were with him until he went out of the ark. And in their going out, Ham stole those garments from Noah, his father, and he took them and hid them from his brothers. And when Ham begat his firstborn, Cush, he gave him the garments in secret, and they were with Cush many days. And Cush also concealed them from his sons and brothers, and when Cush had begotten Nimrod, he gave him those garments through his love for him, and Nimrod grew up, and when he was twenty years old, he put on those garments. And Nimrod became strong when he put on the garments, and God gave him might and strength, and he was a mighty hunter in the earth, yea, he was a mighty hunter in the field, and he hunted the animals, and he built altars, and he offered upon them the animals before the Lord. And Nimrod strengthened himself, and he rose up from amongst his brethren, and he fought the battles of his brethren against all their enemies round about. And the Lord delivered all the enemies of his brethren in his hands, and God prospered him from time to time in his battles, and he reigned upon earth. Therefore it became current in those days, when a man ushered forth those that he had trained up for battle, he would say to them, Like God did to Nimrod, who was a mighty hunter in the earth, and who succeeded in the battles that prevailed against his brethren, that he delivered them from the hands of their enemies, so may God strengthen us and deliver us this day. And when Nimrod was forty years old, at that time there was a war between his brethren and the children of Japheth, so that they were in the power of their enemies. And Nimrod went forth at that time, and he assembled all the sons of Cush and their families, about four hundred and sixty men, 
and he hired also from some of his friends and acquaintances about eighty men, and he gave them their hire, and he went with them to battle. And when he was on the road, Nimrod strengthened the hearts of the people that went with him. And he said to them, Do not fear, neither be alarmed, for all our enemies will be delivered into our hands, and you may do with them as you please. And all the men that went were about five hundred, and they fought against their enemies, and they destroyed them and subdued them, and Nimrod placed standing officers over them in their respective places. And he took some of their children as security, and they were all servants to Nimrod and to his brethren, and Nimrod and all the people that were with him turned homeward. And when Nimrod had joyfully returned from battle, after having conquered his enemies, all his brethren, together with those who knew him before, assembled to make him king over them, and they placed the regal crown upon his head. And he set over his subjects and people, princes, judges, and rulers, as is the custom amongst kings. And he placed Terah, the son of Nahor, the prince of his host, and he dignified him and elevated him above all his princes. And whilst he was reigning according to his heart's desire, after having conquered all his enemies around, he advised with his counselors to build a city for his palace, and they did so. And they found a large valley opposite to the east, and they built him a large and extensive city. And Nimrod called the name of the city that he built Shinar, for the Lord had vehemently shaken his enemies and destroyed them. And Nimrod dwelt in Shinar, and he reigned securely, and he fought with his enemies, and he subdued them, and he prospered in all his battles, and his kingdom became very great. And all nations and tongues heard of his fame, and they gathered themselves to him, and they bowed down to the earth, and they brought him offerings, and he became their lord and king. And they all dwelt with him in the city at Shinar, and Nimrod reigned in the earth over all the sons of Noah, and they were all under his power and counsel. And all the earth was of one tongue and words of union, but Nimrod did not go in the ways of the Lord, and he was more wicked than all the men that were before him from the days of the flood until those days. And he made gods of wood and stone, and he bowed down to them, and he rebelled against the Lord, and taught all his subjects and the people of the earth his wicked ways. And Mardon his son was more wicked than his father. And every one that heard of the acts of Mardon the son of Nimrod would say concerning him, From the wicked goeth forth wickedness. Therefore it became a proverb in the whole earth, saying, From the wicked goeth forth wickedness. And it was current in the words of men from that time to this. And Terah the son of Nahor, prince of Nimrod's host, was in those days very great in the sight of the king and his subjects, and the king and princes loved him, and they elevated him very high. And Terah took a wife, and her name was Amthelo, the daughter of Cornebo, and the wife of Terah conceived and bare him a son in those days. Terah was seventy years old when he begat him, and Terah called the name of his son that was born unto him, Abram, because the king had raised him in those days, and dignified him above all his princes that were with him. Chapter 8 And it was in the night that Abram was born, that all the servants of Terah, and all the wise men of Nimrod, and his conjurers, came and ate and drank in the house of Terah, and they rejoiced with him on that night. And when all the wise men and conjurers went out from the house of Terah, they lifted up their eyes toward heaven that night to look at the stars, and they saw, and behold, one very large star came from the east and ran in the heavens, and he swallowed up the four stars from the four sides of the heavens. And all the wise men of the king and his conjurers were astonished at the sight, and the sages understood this matter, and they knew its import. And they said to each other, This only betokens the child that has been born to Terah this night, who will grow up and be fruitful and multiply, and possess all the earth, he and his children forever, and he and his seed will slay great kings and inherit their lands. And the wise men and conjurers went home that night, and in the morning all these wise men and conjurers rose up early and assembled in an appointed house. And they spoke and said to each other, Behold, the sight that we saw last night is hidden from the king. It has not been made known to him. And should this thing get known to the king in the latter days, he will say to us, Why have you concealed this matter from me? And then we shall all suffer death. Therefore, now let us go and tell the king the sight which we saw, and the interpretation thereof, and we shall then remain clear. And they did so. And they all went to the king, and bowed down to him to the ground. And they said, May the king live, may the king live. We heard that a son was born to Terah, the son of Nahor, the prince of thy host. And we yesternight came to his house, and we ate and drank and rejoiced with him that night. And when thy servants went out from the house of Terah to go to our respective homes to abide there for the night, we lifted up our eyes to heaven, and we saw a great star coming from the east, 
and the same star ran with great speed and swallowed up four great stars from the four sides of the heavens. And thy servants were astonished at the sight which we saw, and were greatly terrified, and we made our judgment upon the sight, and knew by our wisdom the proper interpretation thereof, that this thing applies to the child that is born to Tira, who will grow up and multiply greatly, and become powerful, and kill all the kings of the earth, and inherit all their lands, he and his seed forever. And now, our Lord and King, behold, we have truly acquainted thee with what we have seen concerning this child. If it seemeth good to the king to give his father value for this child, we will slay him before he shall grow up and increase in the land, and his evil increase against us, that we and our children perish through his evil. And the king heard their words, and they seemed good in his sight, and he sent and called for Tira, and Tira came before the king. And the king said to Tira, I have been told that a son was yesternight born to thee, and after this manner was observed in the heavens at his birth. And now, therefore, give me the child, that we may slay him before his evil springs up against us, and I will give thee for his value thy house full of silver and gold. And Tira answered the king and said to him, My lord and king, I have heard thy words, and thy servant shall do all that his king desireth. But my lord and king, I will tell thee what happened to me yesternight, that I may see what advice the king will give his servant, and then I will answer the king upon what he has just spoken. And the king said, Speak. And Tira said to the king, Aeon, the son of Mered, came to me yesternight, saying, Give unto me the great and beautiful horse that the king gave thee, and I will give thee silver and gold, and straw, and provender for its value. And I said to him, Wait till I see the king concerning thy words, and behold, whatever the king saith, that will I do. And now, my lord and king, behold, I have made this thing known to thee, and the advice which my king will give unto his servant, that will I follow. And the king heard the words of Tira, and his anger was kindled, and he considered him in the light of a fool. And the king answered Tira, and he said to him, Art thou so silly, ignorant, or deficient in understanding to do this thing, to give thy beautiful horse for silver and gold, or even for straw and provender? Art thou so short of silver and gold, that thou shouldest do this thing, because thou canst not obtain straw and provender to feed thy horse? And what is silver and gold to thee, or straw and provender, that thou shouldst give away that fine horse which I gave thee, like which there is none to be had on the whole earth? And the king left off speaking, and Tira answered the king, saying, Like unto this has the king spoken to his servant. I beseech thee, my lord and king, what is this which thou didst say unto me, saying, Give thy son that we may slay him, and I will give thee silver and gold for his value. What shall I do with silver and gold after the death of my son? Who shall inherit me? Surely then at my death the silver and gold will return to my king who gave it. And when the king heard the words of Tira, and the parable which he brought concerning the king, it grieved him greatly, and he was vexed at this thing, and his anger burned within him. And Tira saw that the anger of the king was kindled against him, and he answered the king, saying, All that I have is in the king's power. Whatever the king desires to do to his servant, that let him do. Yea, even my son, he is in the king's power, without value in exchange, he and his two brothers that are older than he. And the king said to Tira, No, but I will purchase thy younger son for a price. And Tira answered the king, saying, I beseech thee, my lord and king, to let thy servant speak a word before thee, and let the king hear the word of his servant. And Tira said, Let my king give me three days' time till I consider this matter within myself, and consult with my family concerning the words of my king. And he pressed the king greatly to agree to this. And the king hearkened to Tira, and he did so, and he gave him three days' time. And Tira went out from the king's presence, and he came home to his family, and spoke to them all the words of the king, and the people were greatly afraid. And it was in the third day that the king sent to Tira, saying, Send me thy son for a price, as I spoke to thee, and shouldst thou not do this, I will send and slay all thou hast in thy house, so that thou shalt not even have a dog remaining. And Tira hastened, as the thing was urgent from the king, and he took a child from one of his servants, which his handmaid had borne to him that day. And Tira brought the child to the king, and received value for him. And the Lord was with Tira in this matter, that Nimrod might not cause Abram's death. And the king took the child from Tira, and with all his might dashed his head to the ground, for he thought it had been Abram. And this was concealed from him from that day, and it was forgotten by the king, as it was the will of providence not to suffer Abram's death. And Tira took Abram his son secretly, together with his mother and nurse, and he concealed them in a cave, and he brought them their provisions monthly. 
And the Lord was with Abram in the cave, and he grew up, and Abram was in the cave ten years, and the king and his princes, soothsayers and sages, thought that the king had killed Abram. Chapter 9 And Haran, the son of Terah, Abram's oldest brother, took a wife in those days. Haran was thirty-nine years old when he took her, and the wife of Haran conceived and bare a son, and he called his name Lot. And she conceived again, and bare a daughter, and she called her name Milcah. And she again conceived, and bare a daughter, and she called her name Sarai. Haran was forty-two years old when he begat Sarai, which was in the tenth year of the life of Abram. And in those days Abram and his mother and nurse went out from the cave, as the king and his subjects had forgotten the affair of Abram. And when Abram came out from the cave, he went to Noah and his son Shem, and he remained with them to learn the instruction of the Lord and his ways, and no man knew where Abram was, and Abram served Noah and Shem his son for a long time. And Abram was in Noah's house thirty-nine years, and Abram knew the Lord from three years old, and he went in the ways of the Lord until the day of his death, as Noah and his son Shem had taught him. And all the sons of the earth in those days greatly transgressed against the Lord, and they rebelled against him, and they served other gods, and they forgot the Lord who had created them in the earth. And the inhabitants of the earth made unto themselves at that time every man his god, gods of wood and stone, which could neither speak, hear, nor deliver. And the sons of men served them, and they became their gods. And the king and all his servants, and Terah with all his household, were then the first of those that served gods of wood and stone. And Terah had twelve gods of large size made of wood and stone after the twelve months of the year, and he served each one monthly, and every month Terah would bring his meat offering and drink offering to his gods, and thus did Terah all the days. And all that generation were wicked in the sight of the Lord, and they thus made every man his god, but they forsook the Lord who had created them. And there was not a man found in those days in the whole earth who knew the Lord, for they served each man his own god, except Noah and his household, and all those who were under his counsel knew the Lord in those days. And Abram, the son of Terah, was waxing great in those days in the house of Noah, and no man knew it, and the Lord was with him. And the Lord gave Abram an understanding heart, and he knew all the works of that generation were vain, and that all their gods were vain, and were of no avail. And Abram saw the sun shining upon the earth, and Abram said unto himself, Surely now this sun that shines upon the earth is God, and him will I serve. And Abram served the sun in that day, and he prayed to him. And when evening came, the sun set as usual, and Abram said within himself, Surely this cannot be God. And Abram still continued to speak within himself, Who is he who made the heavens and the earth, who created upon earth? Where is he? And night darkened over him, and he lifted up his eyes toward the west, north, south, and east, and he saw that the sun had vanished from the earth, and the day became dark. And Abram saw the stars and moon before him, and he said, Surely this is the God who created the whole earth as well as man. And behold, these his servants are gods around him. And Abram served the moon and prayed to it all that night. And in the morning, when it was light and the sun shone upon the earth as usual, Abram saw all the things that the Lord God had made upon earth. And Abram said unto himself, Surely these are not gods that made the earth and all mankind, but these are the servants of God. And Abram remained in the house of Noah, and there knew the Lord and his ways, and he served the Lord all the days of his life. And all that generation forgot the Lord, and served other gods of wood and stone, and rebelled all their days. And King Nimrod reigned securely, and all the earth was under his control, and all the earth was of one tongue and words of union. And all the princes of Nimrod and his great men took counsel together, Phut, Mitzrayim, Cush, and Canaan, with their families, and they said to each other, Come, let us build ourselves a city, and in it a strong tower, and its top reaching heaven, and we will make ourselves famed, so that we may reign upon the whole world, in order that the evil of our enemies may cease from us, and that we may reign mightily over them, and that we may not become scattered over the earth on account of their wars. And they all went before the king, and they told the king these words, and the king agreed with them in this affair, and he did so. And all the families assembled consisting of about six hundred thousand men, and they went to seek an extensive piece of ground to build the city and the tower. And they sought in the whole earth, and they found none like one valley at the east of the land of Shinar, about two days' walk, and they journeyed there, and they dwelt there. And they began to make bricks and burn fires to build the city and the tower that they had imagined to complete. 
and the building of the tower was unto them a transgression and a sin, and they began to build it. And whilst they were building against the Lord God of heaven, they imagined in their hearts to war against him and to ascend into heaven. And all these people and all the families divided themselves in three parts. The first said, We will ascend into heaven and fight against him. The second said, We will ascend to heaven and place our own gods there and serve them. And the third part said, We will ascend to heaven and smite him with bows and spears. And God knew all their works and all their evil thoughts. And he saw the city and the tower which they were building. And when they were building, they built themselves a great city and a very high and strong tower. And on account of its height, the mortar and bricks did not reach the builders in their ascent to it, until those who went up had completed a full year. And after that, they reached to the builders and gave them the mortar and the bricks. Thus was it done daily. And behold, these ascended, and others descended the whole day. And if a brick should fall from their hands and get broken, they would all weep over it. And if a man fell and died, none of them would look at him. And the Lord knew their thoughts, and it came to pass, when they were building, they cast the arrows toward the heavens, and all the arrows fell upon them filled with blood. And when they saw them, they said to each other, Surely we have slain all those that are in heaven. For this was from the Lord, in order to cause them to err, and in order to destroy them from off the face of the ground. And they built the tower and the city, and they did this thing daily until many days and years were elapsed. And God said to the seventy angels who stood foremost before him, to those who were near to him, saying, Come, let us descend and confuse their tongues, that one man shall not understand the language of his neighbor. And they did so unto them. And from that day following, they forgot each man his neighbor's tongue, and they could not understand to speak in one tongue. And when the builder took from the hands of his neighbor lime or stone, which he did not order, the builder would cast it away, and throw it upon his neighbor, that he would die. And they did so many days, and they killed many of them in this manner. And the Lord smote the three divisions that were there, and he punished them according to their works and designs. Those who said, We will ascend to heaven and serve our gods, became like apes and elephants. And those who said, We will smite the heaven with our arrows, the Lord killed them, one man through the hand of his neighbor. And the third division of those who said, We will ascend to heaven and fight against him, the Lord scattered them throughout the earth. And those who were left amongst them, when they knew and understood the evil which was coming upon them, they forsook the building, and they also became scattered upon the face of the whole earth. And they ceased building the city and the tower. Therefore he called that place Babel. For there the Lord confounded the language of the whole earth. Behold, it was at the east of the land of Shinar. And as to the tower which the sons of men built, the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up one third part thereof. And a fire also descended from heaven and burned another third. And the other third is left to this day. And it is of that part which was aloft and its circumference is three days' walk. And many of the sons of men died in that tower, a people without number. Chapter 10 And Peleg, the son of Eber, died in those days, in the forty-eighth year of the life of Abram, son of Terah. And all the days of Peleg were two hundred and thirty-nine years. And when the Lord had scattered the sons of men on account of their sin at the tower, behold, they spread forth into many divisions, and all the sons of men were dispersed into the four corners of the earth. And all the families became each according to its language, its land, or its city. And the sons of men built many cities according to their families in all the places where they went, and throughout the earth where the Lord had scattered them. And some of them built cities in places from which they were afterward extirpated. And they called these cities after their own names, or the names of their children, or after their particular occurrences. And the sons of Japheth, the sons of Noah, went and built themselves cities in the places where they were scattered, and they called all their cities after their names. And the sons of Japheth were divided upon the face of the earth into many divisions and languages. And these are the sons of Japheth according to their families, Gomer, Magog, Medai, Javan, Tubal, Meshech, and Tyrus. These are the children of Japheth according to their generations. And the children of Gomer according to their cities, were the Frankum, who dwell in the land of Franza, by the river Franza, by the river Sana. And the children of Raphath are the Bartonim, who dwell in the land of Bartonia, by the river Leda, which empties its waters in the great sea Gihon, that is, Oceanus. And the children of Tugarma are ten families, and these are their names, Buzar, Parzinak, Balgar, Elikanum, Ragbib, Tarkai, 
Bid, Zebuk, Angal, and Tilmaz. All these spread and rested in the north and built themselves cities, and they called their cities after their own names. Those are they who abide by the rivers Hithla and Italak unto this day. But the families of Angoli, Balgar, and Parzanak, they dwell by the great river Dubni, and the names of their cities are also according to their own names. And the children of Javan are the Javanim, who dwell in the land of Macedonia, and the children of Mediari are the Orelim that dwell in the land of Kursan, and the children of Tubal are those that dwell in the land of Tuscana by the river Pasha, and the children of Meshech are the Shibashni, and the children of Tyrus are the Rushash, Kushni, and Angolis. All these went and built themselves cities. Those are the cities that are situate by the sea Jabus, by the river Cura, which empties itself in the river Tragon. And the children of Elisha are the Almanim, and they also went and built themselves cities. Those are the cities situate between the mountains of Job and Shibatmo. And of them were the people of Lombardi, who dwell opposite the mountains of Job and Shibatmo. And they conquered the land of Italia and remain there unto this day. And the children of Kittim are the Romim, who dwell in the valley of Canopia by the river Tibru. And the children of Dudonim are those who dwell in the cities of the sea Gihon in the land of Bordna. These are the families of the children of Japheth according to their cities and languages when they were scattered after the tower, and they called their cities after their names and occurrences. And these are the names of all their cities according to their families, which they built in those days after the tower. And the children of Ham were Cush, Mitzrayim, Phut, and Canaan according to their generations and cities. All these went and built themselves cities as they found fit places for them, and they called their cities after the names of their fathers, Cush, Mitzrayim, Phut, and Canaan. And the children of Mitzrayim are the Ludim, Anamim, Lehabim, Naphtukim, Pathrusim, Kaslukim, and Kaphturim, seven families. All these dwelled by the river Sihor, that is the brook of Egypt, and they built themselves cities and called them after their own names. And the children of Pathros and Kaslak intermarried together, and from them went forth the Pelishtim, and the Azatim, and the Gerarim, and the Gitim, and the Ekronim, in all five families. These also built themselves cities, and they called their cities after the names of their fathers unto this day. And the children of Canaan also built themselves cities, and they called their cities after their names, eleven cities and others without number. And four men from the family of Ham went to the land of the plain. These are the names of the four men, Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, and Zeboim. And these men built themselves four cities in the land of the plain, and they called the names of their cities after their own names. And they and their children and all belonging to them dwelt in those cities, and they were fruitful and multiplied greatly and dwelt peaceably. And Seir, the son of Hur, son of Hivi, son of Canaan, went and found a valley opposite to Mount Paran, and he built a city there. And he and his seven sons and his household dwelt there. And he called the city which he built Seir, according to his name. That is the land of Seir unto this day. These are the families of the children of Ham, according to their languages and cities, when they were scattered to their countries after the tower. And some of the children of Shem, son of Noah, father of all the children of Eber, also went and built themselves cities in the places wherein they were scattered, and they called their cities after their names. And the sons of Shem were Elam, Ashur, Arpaxad, Lud, Aram, and they built themselves cities and called the names of all their cities after their names. And Ashur, son of Shem and his children and household, went forth at that time, a very large body of them, and they went to a distant land that they found, and they met with a very extensive valley in the land that they went to, and they built themselves four cities, and they called them after their own names and occurrences. And these are the names of the cities which the children of Ashur built, Nineveh, Resin, Kalak, and Rehobotur, and the children of Ashur dwell there unto this day. And the children of Aram also went and built themselves a city, and they called the name of the city Uz, after their eldest brother, and they dwell therein, that is the land of Uz to this day. And in the second year, after the tower, a man from the house of Ashur, whose name was Bela, went from the land of Nineveh to sojourn with his household wherever he could find a place, 
and they came until opposite the cities of the plain against Sodom, and they dwelt there. And the man rose up, and built there a small city, and called its name Bela after his name. That is the land of Zoar unto this day. And these are the families of the children of Shem, according to their language and cities, after they were scattered upon the earth after the tower. And every kingdom, city, and family of the families of the children of Noah built themselves many cities after this, and they established governments in all their cities in order to be regulated by their orders. So did all the families of the children of Noah forever. Chapter 11 And Nimrod, son of Cush, was still in the land of Shinar, and he reigned over it, and dwelt there, and he built cities in the land of Shinar. And these are the names of the four cities which he built, and he called their names after the occurrences that happened to them in the building of the tower. And he called the first Babel, saying, Because the Lord there confounded the language of the whole earth, and the name of the second he called Erech, because from there God dispersed them. And the third he called Eked, saying there was a great battle at that place, and the fourth he called Kalna, because his princes and mighty men were consumed there, and they vexed the Lord, they rebelled and transgressed against him. And when Nimrod had built these cities in the land of Shinar, he placed in them the remainder of his people, his princes, and his mighty men that were left in his kingdom. And Nimrod dwelt in Babel, and he there renewed his reign over the rest of his subjects, and he reigned securely, and the subjects and princes of Nimrod called his name Amraphel, saying that at the tower his princes and men fell through his means. And notwithstanding this, Nimrod did not return to the Lord, and he continued in wickedness and teaching wickedness to the sons of men, and Mardon his son was worse than his father, and continued to add to the abominations of his father. And he caused the sons of men to sin, therefore it is said, From the wicked goeth forth wickedness. At that time there was war between the families of the children of Ham, as they were dwelling in the cities which they had built. And Kedorlamer, king of Elam, went away from the families of the children of Ham, and he fought with them, and he subdued them, and he went to the five cities of the plain, and he fought against them, and he subdued them, and they were under his control. And they served him twelve years, and they gave him a yearly tax. At that time died Nahor, son of Serug, in the forty-ninth year of the life of Abram, son of Terah. And in the fifteenth year of the life of Abram, son of Terah, Abram came forth from the house of Noah, and went to his father's house. And Abram knew the Lord, and he went in his ways and instructions, and the Lord his God was with him. And Terah his father was in those days still captain of the host of King Nimrod, and he still followed strange gods. And Abram came to his father's house, and saw twelve gods standing there in their temples, and the anger of Abram was kindled when he saw these images in his father's house. And Abram said, As the Lord liveth, these images shall not remain in my father's house. So shall the Lord who created me do unto me, if in three days' time I do not break them all. And Abram went from them, and his anger burned within him. And Abram hastened and went from the chamber to his father's outer court. And he found his father sitting in the court, and all his servants with him. And Abram came and sat before him. And Abram asked his father, saying, Father, tell me, where is God who created heaven and earth, and all the sons of men upon earth, and who created thee and me? And Terah answered his son Abram, and said, Behold, those who created us are all with us in the house. And Abram said to his father, My lord, show them to me, I pray thee. And Terah brought Abram into the chamber of the inner court, and Abram saw, and behold, the whole room was full of gods of wood and stone, twelve great images, and others less than they, without number. And Terah said to his son, Behold, these are they which made all thou seest upon earth, and which created me and thee, and all mankind. And Terah bowed down to his gods, and he then went away from them, and Abram his son went away with him. And when Abram had gone from them, he went to his mother and sat before her, and he said to his mother, Behold, my father has shown me those who made heaven and earth, and all the sons of men. Now therefore, hasten, and fetch a kid from the flock, and make of it savory meat, that I may bring it to my father's gods as an offering for them to eat. Perhaps I may thereby become acceptable to them. And his mother did so, and she fetched a kid, and made savory meat thereof, and brought it to Abram. And Abram took the savory meat from his mother, and brought it before his father's gods, 
and he drew nigh to them that they might eat, and Terah his father did not know of it. And Abram saw on the day when he was sitting amongst them that they had no voice, no hearing, no motion, and not one of them could stretch forth his hand to eat. And Abram mocked them and said, Surely the savory meat that I prepared has not pleased them, or perhaps it was too little for them, and for that reason they would not eat. Therefore tomorrow I will prepare fresh savory meat, better and more plentiful than this, in order that I may see the result. And it was on the next day that Abram directed his mother concerning the savory meat, and his mother rose and fetched three fine kids from the flock, and she made of them some excellent savory meat, such as her son was fond of, and she gave it to her son Abram, and Terah his father did not know of it. And Abram took the savory meat from his mother, and brought it before his father's gods into the chamber. And he came nigh unto them that they might eat, and he placed it before them. And Abram sat before them all day, thinking perhaps they might eat. And Abram viewed them, and behold, they had neither voice, nor hearing, nor did one of them stretch forth his hand to the meat to eat. And in the evening of that day, in that house, Abram was clothed with the Spirit of God. And he called out and said, Woe unto my father and this wicked generation, whose hearts are all inclined to vanity, who serve these idols of wood and stone, which can neither eat, smell, hear, nor speak, who have mouths without speech, eyes without sight, ears without hearing, hands without feeling, and legs which cannot move. Like them are those that made them, and that trust in them. And when Abram saw all these things, his anger was kindled against his father, and he hastened and took a hatchet in his hand, and came unto the chamber of the gods, and he broke all his father's gods. And when he had done breaking the images, he placed the hatchet in the hand of the great god which was there before them, and he went out. And Terah his father came home, for he had heard at the door the sound of the striking of the hatchet. So Terah came into the house to know what this was about. And Terah, having heard the noise of the hatchet in the room of images, ran to the room to the images, and he met Abram going out. And Terah entered the room and found all the idols fallen down and broken, and the hatchet in the hand of the largest, which was not broken, and the savory meat which Abram his son had made was still before them. And when Terah saw this, his anger was greatly kindled, and he hastened and went from the room to Abram. And he found Abram his son still sitting in the house, and he said to him, What is this work that thou hast done to my gods? And Abram answered Terah his father and said, Not so, my lord. For I brought savory meat before them, and when I came nigh to them with the meat that they might eat, they all at once stretched forth their hands to eat before the great one had put forth his hand to eat. And the large one saw their works that they did before him, and his anger was violently kindled against them, and he went and took the hatchet that was in the house, and came to them, and broke them all, and behold, the hatchet is yet in his hand, as thou seest. And Terah's anger was kindled against his son Abram when he spoke this. And Terah said to Abram his son in anger, What is this tale that thou hast told? Thou speakest lies to me. Is there in these gods spirit, soul, or power to do all that thou hast told me? Are they not wood and stone? And have I not myself made them? And canst thou speak such lies, saying that the large god that was with them smote them? It is thou that didst place the hatchet in his hands, and then sayest he smote them all. And Abram answered his father and said to him, and how canst thou then serve these idols, in whom there is no power to do anything? Can those idols in which thou trustest deliver thee? Can they hear thy prayers when thou callest upon them? Can they deliver thee from the hands of thy enemies? Or will they fight thy battles for thee against thy enemies, that thou shouldest serve wood and stone, which can neither speak nor hear? And now surely it is not good for thee, nor the sons of men that are connected with thee, to do these things. Are you so silly, so foolish? or so short of understanding, that you will serve wood and stone, and do after this manner? And forget the Lord God who made heaven and earth, and who created you in the earth, and thereby bring a great evil upon your souls in this matter by serving stone and wood? Did not our fathers in the days of old sin in this matter, and the Lord God of the universe brought the waters of the flood upon them and destroyed the whole earth? And how can you continue to do this, and serve gods of wood and stone, who cannot hear, or speak, or deliver you from oppression? thereby bringing down the anger of the God of the universe upon you. Now therefore, my father, refrain from this, and bring not evil upon thy soul and the souls of thy household. And Abram hastened, and sprang from before his father, and took the hatchet from his father's largest idol, with which Abraham broke it, and ran away. And Terah, seeing all that Abram had done, hastened to go from his house, and he went to the king, and he came before Nimrod, and stood before him, 
and he bowed down to the king. And the king said, What dost thou want? And he said, I beseech thee, my lord, to hear me. Now fifty years back a child was born to me, and thus has he done to my gods, and thus has he spoken. And now, therefore, my lord and king, send for him, that he may come before thee, and judge him according to the law, that we may be delivered from his evil. And the king sent three men of his servants, and they went and brought Abram before the king. And Nimrod and all his princes and servants were that day sitting before him, and Terah sat also before them. And the king said to Abram, What is this that thou hast done to thy father and to his gods? And Abram answered the king in the words that he spoke to his father, and he said, The large God that was with them in the house did to them what thou hast heard. And the king said to Abram, Had they power to speak and eat and do as thou hast said? And Abram answered the king, saying, And if there be no power in them, why dost thou serve them, and cause the sons of men to err through thy follies? Dost thou imagine that they can deliver thee, or do anything small or great, that thou shouldst serve them? And why wilt thou not sense the God of the whole universe, who created thee, and in whose power it is to kill and keep alive? O foolish, simple, and ignorant king, woe unto thee forever! I thought thou wouldst teach thy servants the upright way, but thou hast not done this, but hast filled the whole earth with thy sins and the sins of thy people, who have followed thy ways. Dost thou not know, or hast thou not heard that this evil which thou doest, our ancestors sinned therein, in the days of old, and the eternal God brought the waters of the flood upon them, and destroyed them all, and also destroyed the whole earth on their account? And wilt thou and thy people rise up now and do like unto this work, in order to bring down the anger of the Lord, God of the universe, and to bring evil upon thee and the whole earth? Now therefore, put away this evil deed which thou doest, and serve the God of the universe, as thy soul is in his hands, and then it will be well with thee. And if thy wicked heart will not hearken to my words, to cause thee to forsake thy evil ways, and to serve the eternal God, then wilt thou die in shame in the latter days, thou, thy people, and all who are connected with thee, hearing thy words or walking in thy evil ways. And when Abram had ceased speaking before the king and princes, Abram lifted up his eyes to the heavens, and he said, The Lord seeth all the wicked, and he will judge them. Chapter 12 And when the king heard the words of Abram, he ordered him to be put into prison, and Abram was ten days in prison. And at the end of those days, the king ordered that all the kings, princes, and governors of different provinces and the sages should come for him. And they sat before him, and Abram was still in the house of confinement. And the king said to the princes and sages, Have you heard what Abram, the son of Terah, has done to his father? Thus has he done to him, and I ordered him to be brought before me, and thus has he spoken. His heart did not misgive him, neither did he stir in my presence, and behold, now he is confined in the prison. And therefore decide what judgment is due to this man who reviled the king, who spoke and did all the things that you heard. And they all answered the king, saying, The man who revileth the king should be hanged upon a tree, but having done all the things that he said, and having despised our gods, he must therefore be burned to death, for this is the law in this matter. If it pleaseth the king to do this, let him order his servants to kindle a fire both night and day in thy brick furnace, and then we will cast this man into it. And the king did so, and he commanded his servants that they should prepare a fire for three days and three nights in the king's furnace that is in Kasdim. And the king ordered them to take Abram from prison and bring him out to be burned. And all the king's servants, princes, lords, governors and judges, and all the inhabitants of the land, about nine hundred thousand men, stood opposite the furnace to see Abram. And all the women and little ones crowded upon the roofs and towers to see what was doing with Abram. And they all stood together at a distance, and there was not a man left that did not come on that day to behold the scene. And when Abram was come, the conjurers of the king and the sages saw Abram, and they cried out to the king, saying, Our sovereign lord, surely this is the man whom we know to have been the child at whose birth the great star swallowed the four stars, which we declared to the king now fifty years since. And behold, now his father has also transgressed thy commands, and mocked thee by bringing thee another child, which thou didst kill. And when the king heard their words, he was exceedingly wroth, and he ordered Terah to be brought before him. And the king said, Hast thou heard what the conjurers have spoken? Now tell me truly, how didst thou? And if thou shalt speak truth, thou shalt be acquitted. 
And seeing that the king's anger was so much kindled, Tira said to the king, My lord and king, thou hast heard the truth, and what the sages have spoken is right. And the king said, How couldst thou do this thing, to transgress my orders, and to give me a child that thou didst not beget, and to take value for him? And Tira answered the king, Because my tender feelings were excited for my son at that time, and I took a son of my handmaid, and I brought him to the king. And the king said, Who advised thee to this? Tell me, do not hide aught from me, and then thou shalt not die. And Tira was greatly terrified in the king's presence, and he said to the king, It was Haran, my eldest son, who advised me to this, and Haran was in those days that Abram was born, two and thirty years old. But Haran did not advise his father to anything, for Tira said this to the king in order to deliver his soul from the king, for he feared greatly. And the king said to Tira, Haran, thy son, who advised thee to this, shall die through fire with Abram. For the sentence of death is upon him for having rebelled against the king's desire in doing this thing. And Haran at that time felt inclined to follow the ways of Abram, but he kept it within himself. And Haran said in his heart, Behold, now the king has seized Abram on account of these things which Abram did, and it shall come to pass that if Abram prevail over the king, I will follow him, but if the king prevail, I will go after the king. And when Tirah had spoken this to the king concerning Haran his son, the king ordered Haran to be seized with Abram. And they brought them both, Abram and Haran his brother, to cast them into the fire, and all the inhabitants of the land, and the king's servants and princes, and all the women and little ones were there, standing that day over them. And the king's servants took Abram and his brother, and they stripped them of all their clothes, excepting their lower garments which were upon them. And they bound their hands and feet with linen cords, and the servants of the king lifted them up and cast them both into the furnace. And the Lord loved Abram, and he had compassion over him. And the Lord came down and delivered Abram from the fire that he was not burned. But all the cords with which they bound him were burned, while Abram remained and walked about in the fire. And Haran died when they had cast him into the fire, and he was burned to ashes, for his heart was not perfect with the Lord. And those men who cast him into the fire, the flame of fire spread over them, and they were burned, and twelve men of them died. And Abram walked in the midst of the fire three days and three nights, and all the servants of the king saw him walking in the fire. And they came and told the king, saying, Behold, we have seen Abram walking about in the midst of the fire, and even the lower garments which are upon him are not burned, but the cord with which he was bound is burned. And when the king heard their words, his heart fainted, and he would not believe them. So he sent other faithful princes to see this matter, and they went and saw it, and told it to the king. And the king rose to go and see it, and he saw Abram walking to and fro in the midst of the fire, and he saw Haran's body burned, and the king wondered greatly. And the king ordered Abram to be taken out from the fire, and his servants approached to take him out, and they could not, for the fire was round about, and the flame ascending toward them from the furnace. And the king's servants fled from it, and the king rebuked them, saying, Make haste, and bring Abram out of the fire, that you shall not die. And the servants of the king again approached to bring Abram out, and the flames came upon them, and burned their faces, so that eight of them died. And when the king saw that his servants could not approach the fire, lest they should be burned, the king called to Abram, O servant of the God who is in heaven, go forth from amidst the fire, and come hither before me. And Abram hearkened to the voice of the king, and he went forth from the fire, and came and stood before the king. And when Abram came out, the king and all his servants saw Abram coming before the king, with his lower garments upon him, for they were not burned, but the cord with which he was bound was burned. And the king said to Abram, How is it that thou wast not burned in the fire? And Abram said to the king, The God of heaven and earth, in whom I trust, and who has all in his power, he delivered me from the fire into which thou didst cast me. And Haran the brother of Abram was burned to ashes, and they sought for his body, and they found it consumed. And Haran was eighty-two years old when he died in the fire of Kasdim. And the king, princes, and inhabitants of the land, seeing that Abram was delivered from the fire, they came and bowed down to Abram. And Abram said to them, Do not bow down to me, but bow down to the God of the world who made you, and serve him, and go in his ways, for it is he who delivered me from out of this fire, and it is he who created the souls and spirits of all men, and formed man in his mother's womb, and brought him forth into the world, 
and it is he who will deliver those who trust in him from all pain. And this thing seemed very wonderful in the eyes of the king and princes, that Abram was saved from the fire, and that Haran was burned. And the king gave Abram many presents, and he gave him his two head servants from the king's house. The name of one was Ani, and the name of the other was Eleazar. And all the kings, princes, and servants gave Abram many gifts of silver and gold and pearl. And the king and his princes sent him away, and he went in peace. And Abram went forth from the king in peace, and many of the king's servants followed him, and about three hundred men joined him. And Abram returned on that day, and went to his father's house, he and the men that followed him. And Abram served the Lord his God all the days of his life, and he walked in his ways, and followed his law. And from that day forward, Abram inclined the hearts of the sons of men to serve the Lord. And at that time, Nahor and Abram took unto themselves wives, the daughters of their brother Haran. The wife of Nahor was Milcah, and the name of Abram's wife was Sarai. And Sarai, wife of Abram, was barren. She had no offspring in those days. And at the expiration of two years from Abram's going out of the fire, that is in the fifty-second year of his life, behold, King Nimrod sat in Babel upon the throne, and the king fell asleep and dreamed that he was standing with his troops and hosts in a valley opposite the king's furnace. And he lifted up his eyes and saw a man in the likeness of Abram coming forth from the furnace, and that he came and stood before the king with his drawn sword, and then sprang to the king with his sword. When the king fled from the man, for he was afraid, and while he was running, the man threw an egg upon the king's head, and the egg became a great river. And the king dreamed that all his troops sank in that river and died, and the king took flight with three men who were before him, and he escaped. And the king looked at these men, and they were clothed in princely dresses as the garments of kings, and had the appearance and majesty of kings. And while they were running, the river again turned to an egg before the king, and there came forth from the egg a young bird, which came before the king, and flew at his head, and plucked out the king's eye. And the king was grieved at the sight, and he awoke out of his sleep, and his spirit was agitated, and he felt a great terror. And in the morning the king rose from his couch in fear, and he ordered all the wise men and magicians to come before him, when the king related his dream to them. And a wise servant of the king, whose name was Anakai, answered the king, saying, This is nothing else but the evil of Abram and his seed which will spring up against my lord and the king in the latter days. And behold, the day will come when Abram and his seed and the children of his household will war with my king, and they will smite all the king's hosts and his troops. And as to what thou hast said concerning three men, which thou didst see like unto thyself, and which did escape, this means that only thou wilt escape with three kings from the kings of the earth, who will be with thee in battle. And that which thou sawest of the river which turned to an egg at first, and the young bird plucking out thine eye, this means nothing else but the seed of Abraham, which will slay the king in the latter days. This is my king's dream, and this is the interpretation. And the dream is true, and the interpretation which thy servant has given thee is right. Now therefore, my king, surely thou knowest that it is now fifty-two years since thy sages saw this at the birth of Abram. And if my king will suffer Abram to live in the earth, it will be to the injury of my lord and king. For all the days that Abram liveth, neither thou nor thy kingdom will be established. For this was known formerly at his birth. And why will not my king slay him, that his evil may be kept from thee in the latter days? And Nimrod hearkened to the voice of Anukai, and he sent some of his servants in secret to go and seize Abram, and bring him before the king to suffer death. And Eleazar, Abram's servant, whom the king had given him, was at that time in the presence of the king, and he heard what Anukai had advised the king, and what the king had said to cause Abram's death. And Eleazar said to Abram, Hasten, rise up and save thy soul, that thou mayest not die through the hands of the king. For thus did he see in a dream concerning thee, and thus did Anukai interpret it, and thus also did Anukai advise the king concerning thee. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Eleazar, and Abram hastened and ran for safety to the house of Noah and his son Shem, and he concealed himself there and found a place of safety. And the king's servants came to Abram's house to seek him, but they could not find him. And they searched throughout the country, and he was not to be found. And they went and searched in every direction, and he was not to be met with. And when the king's servants could not find Abram, they returned to the king. But the king's anger against Abram was stilled, as they did not find him. And the king drove from his mind the matter concerning Abram. 
And Abram was concealed in Noah's house for one month until the king had forgotten this matter. But Abram was still afraid of the king. And Terah came to see Abram his son secretly in the house of Noah. And Terah was very great in the eyes of the king. And Abram said to his father, Dost thou not know that the king thinketh to slay me, and to annihilate my name from the earth by advice of his wicked counselors? Now whom hast thou here, and what hast thou in this land? Arise, let us go together to the land of Canaan, that we may be delivered from his hand, lest thou perish also through him in the latter days. Dost thou not know, or hast thou not heard, that it is not through love that Nimrod giveth thee all this honor, but it is only for his benefit that he bestoweth all this good upon thee? And if he do unto thee greater good than this, surely these are only vanities of the world, for wealth and riches cannot avail in the day of wrath and anger. Now therefore hearken to my voice, and let us arise and go to the land of Canaan, out of the reach of injury from Nimrod, and serve thou the Lord who created thee in the earth, and it will be well with thee, and cast away all the vain things which thou pursuest. And Abram ceased to speak, when Noah and his son Shem answered Terah, saying, True is the word which Abram hath said unto thee. And Terah hearkened to the voice of his son Abram, and Terah did all that Abram said, for this was from the Lord, that the king should not cause Abram's death. Chapter 13 And Terah took his son Abram, and his grandson Lot, the son of Haran, and Sarai his daughter-in-law, the wife of his son Abram, and all the souls of his household, and went with them from Ur Kasdim to go to the land of Canaan. And when they came as far as the land of Haran, they remained there, for it was exceedingly good land for pasture, and of sufficient extent for those who accompanied them. And the people of the land of Haran saw that Abram was good and upright with God and men, and that the Lord his God was with him. And some of the people of the land of Haran came and joined Abram, and he taught them the instruction of the Lord and his ways. And these men remained with Abram in his house, and they adhered to him. And Abram remained in the land three years, and at the expiration of three years the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am the Lord who brought thee forth from Ur Kasdim, and delivered thee from the hands of all thine enemies. And now therefore, if thou wilt hearken to my voice, and keep my commandments, my statutes, and my laws, then will I cause thy enemies to fall before thee, and I will multiply thy seed like the stars of heaven, and I will send my blessing upon all the works of thy hands, and thou shalt lack nothing. Arise now, take thy wife, and all belonging to thee, and go to the land of Canaan, and remain there. And I will there be unto thee for a god, and I will bless thee. And Abram arose, and took his wife, and all belonging to him. And he went to the land of Canaan, as the Lord had told him. And Abram was fifty years old when he went from Haran. And Abram came to the land of Canaan, and dwelt in the midst of the city. And he there pitched his tent among the children of Canaan, inhabitants of the land. And the Lord appeared to Abram when he came to the land of Canaan, and said to him, this is the land which I gave unto thee and to thy seed after thee forever, and I will make thy seed like the stars of heaven, and I will give unto thy seed for an inheritance all the lands which thou seest. And Abram built an altar in the place where God had spoken to him, and Abram there called upon the name of the Lord. At that time, at the end of three years of Abram's dwelling in the land of Canaan, in that year Noah died, which was the fifty-eighth year of the life of Abram, and all the days that Noah lived were nine hundred and fifty years, and he died. And Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, he, his wife, and all belonging to him, and all those that accompanied him, together with those that joined him from the people of the land. But Nahor, Abram's brother, and Terah his father, and Lot the son of Haran, and all belonging to them, dwelt in Haran. In the fifth year of Abram's dwelling in the land of Canaan, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, and all the cities of the plain revolted from the power of Chedorlaomer, king of Elam, for all the kings of the cities of the plain had served Chedorlaomer for twelve years and given him a yearly tax, but in those days, in the thirteenth year, they rebelled against him. And in the tenth year of Abram's dwelling in the land of Canaan, there was war between Nimrod, king of Shinar, and Chedorlaomer, king of Elam, and Nimrod came to fight with Chedorlaomer and to subdue him. For Chedorlaomer was at that time one of the princes of the hosts of Nimrod, and when all the people at the tower were dispersed, and those that remained were also scattered upon the face of the earth, Chedorlaomer went to the land of Elam, and reigned over it, and rebelled against his lord. And in those days, when Nimrod saw that the cities of the plain had rebelled, he came with pride and anger to war with Chedorlaomer, and Nimrod assembled all his princes and subjects, about seven hundred thousand men, and went against Chedorlaomer, 
and Shadolimer went out to meet him with five thousand men, and they prepared for battle in the valley of Babel, which is between Elam and Shinar. And all those kings fought there, and Nimrod and his people were smitten before the people of Chedorlaomer, and there fell from Nimrod's men about six hundred thousand, and Mardon the king's son fell amongst them. And Nimrod fled, and returned in shame and disgrace to his land, and he was under subjection to Chedorlaomer for a long time. And Chedorlaomer returned to his land, and sent princes of his host to the kings that dwelt around him, to Arioch king of Elisar, and to Tidal king of Goyim, and made a covenant with them. And they were all obedient to his commands. And it was in the fifteenth year of Abram's dwelling in the land of Canaan, which is the seventieth year of the life of Abram. And the Lord appeared to Abram in that year, and he said to him, I am the Lord who brought thee out of Ur, Gazdim, to give thee this land for an inheritance. Now therefore walk before me, and be perfect, and keep my commandments. For to thee and to thy seed I will give this land for an inheritance, for the river Mizraim, unto the great river Euphrates. And thou shalt come to thy fathers in peace and in good age, and the fourth generation shall return here in this land and shall inherit it forever. And Abram built an altar, and he called upon the name of the Lord who appeared to him, and he brought up sacrifices upon the altar to the Lord. At that time Abram returned and went to Haran to see his father and mother and his father's household, and Abram and his wife and all belonging to him returned to Haran, and Abram dwelt in Haran five years. And many of the people of Haran, about seventy-two men, followed Abram, and Abram taught them the instruction of the Lord and his ways, and he taught them to know the Lord. In those days the Lord appeared to Abram in Haran, and he said to him, Behold, I spoke unto thee these twenty years back, saying, Go forth from thy land, from thy birthplace, and from thy father's house, to the land which I have shown thee, to give it to thee and to thy children, for there in that land will I bless thee, and make thee a great nation, and make thy name great and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Now therefore, arise, go forth from this place, thou, thy wife, and all belonging to thee, also every one born in thy house, and all the souls thou hast made in Haran, and bring them out with thee from here, and rise to return to the land of Canaan. And Abram arose and took his wife Sarai, and all belonging to him, and all that were born to him in his house, and all the souls which they had made in Haran, and they came out to go to the land of Canaan. And Abram went and returned to the land of Canaan, according to the word of the Lord. And Lot, the son of his brother Haran, went with him. And Abram was seventy-five years old when he went forth from Haran to return to the land of Canaan. And he came to the land of Canaan, according to the word of the Lord to Abram. And he pitched his tent, and he dwelt in the plain of Mamre. And with him was Lot, his brother's son, and all belonging to him. And the Lord again appeared to Abram and said, To thy seed will I give this land. And he there built an altar to the Lord who appeared to him, which is still to this day in the plains of Mamre. Chapter 14 In those days there was in the land of Shinar a wise man who had understanding in all wisdom, and of a beautiful appearance, but he was poor and indigent. His name was Rikion, and he was hard set to support himself. And he resolved to go to Egypt, to Osiris, the son of Anam, king of Egypt, to show the king his wisdom, for perhaps he might find grace in his sight, to raise him up and give him maintenance. And Rikion did so. And when Rikion came to Egypt, he asked the inhabitants of Egypt concerning the king, and the inhabitants of Egypt told him the custom of the king of Egypt, for it was then the custom of the king of Egypt that he went from his royal palace and was seen abroad only one day in the year, and after that the king would return to his palace to remain there. And on the day when the king went forth, he passed judgment in the land, and everyone having a suit came before the king that day to obtain his request. And when Rikion heard of the custom in Egypt, and that he could not come into the presence of the king, he grieved greatly and was very sorrowful. And in the evening Rikion went out and found a house in ruins, formerly a bakehouse in Egypt, and he abode there all night in bitterness of soul, and pinched with hunger, and sleep was removed from his eyes. And Rikion considered within himself what he should do in the town until the king made his appearance, and how he might maintain himself there. And he rose in the morning and walked about, and met in his way those who sold vegetables and various sorts of seed with which they supplied the inhabitants. And Rikion wished to do the same in order to get a maintenance in the city, but he was unacquainted with the custom of the people, and he was like a blind man among them. And he went and obtained vegetables to sell them for his support, and the rabble assembled about him and ridiculed him and took his vegetables from him and left him nothing. And he rose up from there in bitterness of soul, and went sighing to the bakehouse in which he had remained all the night before, and he slept there the second night. 
and on that night again he reasoned within himself how he could save himself from starvation, and he devised a scheme how to act. And he rose up in the morning and acted ingeniously, and went and hired thirty strong men of the rabble, carrying their war instruments in their hands, and he led them to the top of the Egyptian sepulchre, and he placed them there. And he commanded them, saying, Thus saith the king, Strengthen yourselves, and be valiant men, and let no man be buried here until two hundred pieces of silver be given, and then he may be buried. And those men did according to the order of Rikion to the people of Egypt the whole of that year. And in eight months' time, Rikion and his men gathered great riches of silver and gold, and Rikion took a great quantity of horses and other animals, and he hired more men, and he gave them horses, and they remained with him. And when the year came round, at the time the king went forth into the town, all the inhabitants of Egypt assembled together to speak to him concerning the work of Rikion and his men. And the king went forth on the appointed day, and all the Egyptians came before him and cried unto him, saying, May the king live forever. What is this thing thou doest in the town to thy servants, not to suffer a dead body to be buried until so much silver and gold be given? Was there ever the like unto this done in the whole earth, from the days of former kings, yea, even from the days of Adam unto this day, that the dead should not be buried only for a set price? We know it to be the custom of kings to take a yearly tax from the living, but thou dost not only do this, but from the dead also thou exactest a tax day by day. Now, O king, we can no more bear this, for the whole city is ruined on this account, and dost thou not know it? And when the king heard all that they had spoken, he was very wroth, and his anger burned within him at this affair, for he had known nothing of it. And the king said, Who and where is he that dares to do this wicked thing in my land without my command? Surely you will tell me. And they told him all the works of Rikion and his men, and the king's anger was aroused, and he ordered Rikion and his men to be brought before him. And Rikion took about a thousand children, sons and daughters, and clothed them in silk and embroidery, and he set them upon horses, and sent them to the king by means of his men. And he also took a great quantity of silver and gold, and precious stones, and a strong and beautiful horse as a present for the king, with which he came before the king, and bowed down to the earth before him. And the king, his servants, and all the inhabitants of Egypt wondered at the work of Rikion, and they saw his riches and the present that he had brought to the king. And it greatly pleased the king, and he wondered at it. And when Rikion sat before him, the king asked him concerning all his works, and Rikion spoke all his words wisely before the king, his servants, and all the inhabitants of Egypt. And when the king heard the words of Rikion and his wisdom, Rikion found grace in his sight, and he met with grace and kindness from all the servants of the king, and from all the inhabitants of Egypt on account of his wisdom and excellent speeches, and from that time they loved him exceedingly. And the king answered and said to Rikion, Thy name shall no more be called Rikion, but Pharaoh shall be thy name, since thou didst exact a tax from the dead. And he called his name Pharaoh. And the king and his subjects loved Rikion for his wisdom, and they consulted with all the inhabitants of Egypt to make him prefect under the king. And all the inhabitants of Egypt and its wise men did so, and it was made a law in Egypt. And they made Rikion Pharaoh prefect under Oswaris, king of Egypt. And Rikion Pharaoh governed over Egypt daily, administering justice to the whole city. But Oswaris the king would judge the people of the land one day in the year, when he went out to make his appearance. And Rikion Pharaoh cunningly usurped the government of Egypt, and he exacted a tax from all the inhabitants of Egypt. And all the inhabitants of Egypt greatly loved Rikion Pharaoh, and they made a decree to call every king that should reign over them and their seed in Egypt Pharaoh. Therefore all the kings that reigned in Egypt from that time forward were called Pharaoh unto this day. Chapter 15 And in that year there was a heavy famine throughout the land of Canaan, and the inhabitants of the land could not remain on account of the famine, for it was very grievous. And Abram, and all belonging to him, rose and went down to Egypt on account of the famine. And when they were at the brook of Mitzrayim, they remained there some time to rest from the fatigue of the road. And Abram and Sarai were walking at the border of the brook of Mizraim, and Abram beheld his wife Sarai that she was very beautiful. And Abram said to his wife Sarai, Since God has created thee with such a beautiful countenance, I am afraid of the Egyptians, lest they should slay me and take thee away, for the fear of God is not in these places. Surely then thou shalt do this. Say thou art my sister to all that may ask thee, in order that it may be well with me, and that we may live and not be put to death. And Abram commanded the same to all those that came with him to Egypt on account of the famine. Also his nephew, Lot, he commanded, saying, If the Egyptians ask thee concerning Sarai, say she is the sister of Abram. 
And yet with all these orders, Abram did not put confidence in them. But he took Sarai, and placed her in a chest, and concealed it among their vessels. For Abram was greatly concerned about Sarai, on account of the wickedness of the Egyptians. And Abram and all belonging to him rose up from the brook of Mitzrayim, and came to Egypt. And they had scarcely entered the gates of the city, when the guards stood up to them, saying, Give tithe to the king from what you have, and then you may come into the town. And Abram and those that were with him did so. And Abram with the people that were with him came to Egypt, and when they came, they brought the chest in which Sarai was concealed, and the Egyptians saw the chest. And the king's servants approached Abram, saying, What hast thou here in this chest, which we have not seen? Now open thou the chest, and give tithe to the king of all that it contains. And Abram said, This chest I will not open, but all you demand upon it I will give. And Pharaoh's officers answered Abram, saying, It is a chest of precious stones. Give us the tenth thereof. Abram said, All that you desire I will give, but you must not open the chest. And the king's officers pressed Abram, and they reached the chest and opened it with force, and they saw, and behold, a beautiful woman was in the chest. And when the officers of the king beheld Sarai, they were struck with admiration at her beauty, and all the princes and servants of Pharaoh assembled to see Sarai, for she was very beautiful. And the king's officers ran and told Pharaoh all that they had seen, and they praised Sarai to the king. And Pharaoh ordered her to be brought, and the woman came before the king. And Pharaoh beheld Sarai, and she pleased him exceedingly, and he was struck with her beauty. And the king rejoiced greatly on her account, and made presents to those who brought him the tidings concerning her. And the woman was then brought to Pharaoh's house, and Abram grieved on account of his wife, and he prayed to the Lord to deliver her from the hands of Pharaoh. And Sarai also prayed at that time and said, O Lord God, thou didst tell my lord Abraham to go from this land, and from his father's house to the land of Canaan, and thou didst promise to dwell with him, if he would perform thy commands. Now behold, we have done that which thou didst command us, and we left our land and our families, and we went to a strange land, and to a people whom we have not known before. And we came to this land to avoid the famine, and this evil accident has befallen me. Now therefore, O Lord God, deliver us and save us from the hand of this oppressor, and to do well with me for the sake of thy mercy. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Sarai, and the Lord sent an angel to deliver Sarai from the power of Pharaoh. And the king came and sat before Sarai, and behold an angel of the Lord was standing over them, and he appeared to Sarai and said to her, Do not fear, for the Lord has heard thy prayer. And the king approached Sarai and said to her, What is that man to thee who brought thee hither? And she said, He is my brother. And the king said, It is incumbent upon us to make him great, to elevate him, and to do unto him all the good which thou shalt command us. And at the time the king sent to Abram silver and gold, and precious stones in abundance, together with cattle, men, servants, and maidservants. And the king ordered Abram to be brought, and he sat in the court of the king's house, and the king greatly exalted Abraham on that night. And the king approached to speak to Sarai, and he reached out his hand to touch her, when the angel smote him heavily, and he was terrified, and he refrained from reaching to her. And when the king came near to Sarai, the angel smote him to the ground, and acted thus to him the whole night, and the king was terrified. And the angel on that night smote heavily all the servants of the king, and his whole household, on account of Sarai. And there was a great lamentation that night amongst the people of Pharaoh's house, and Pharaoh, seeing the evil that befell him, said, Surely on account of this woman has this thing happened to me. And he removed himself at some distance from her, and spoke pleasing words to her. And the king said to Sarai, Tell me, I pray thee concerning the man with whom thou camest here. And Sarai said, This man is my husband, and I said to thee that he was my brother, for I was afraid, lest thou shouldst put him to death through wickedness. And the king kept away from Sarai, and the plagues of the angel of the Lord ceased from him and his household. And Pharaoh knew that he was smitten on account of Sarai, and the king was greatly astonished at this. And in the morning the king called for Abram and said to him, What is this thou hast done to me? Why didst thou say she is my sister, owing to which I took her unto me for a wife? And this heavy plague has therefore come upon me in my household. Now therefore, here is thy wife. Take her and go from our land, lest we all die on her account. And Pharaoh took more cattle, menservants and maidservants, and silver and gold, to give to Abram, and he returned unto him Sarai his wife. And the king took a maiden whom he begat by his concubines, and he gave her to Sarai for a handmaid. And the king said to his daughter, It is better for thee, my daughter, to be a handmaid in this man's house than to be a mistress in my house, after we have beheld the evil that befell us on account of this woman. 
And Abram arose, and he and all belonging to him went away from Egypt, and Pharaoh ordered some of his men to accompany him and all that went with him. And Abram returned to the land of Canaan, to the place where he had made the altar, where he at first had pitched his tent. And Lot, the son of Haran, Abram's brother, had a heavy stock of cattle, flocks, and herds and tents, for the Lord was bountiful to them on account of Abram. And when Abram was dwelling in the land, the herdsmen of Lot quarreled with the herdsmen of Abram, for their property was too great for them to remain together in the land, and the land could not bear them on account of their cattle. And when Abram's herdmen went to feed their flock, they would not go into the fields of the people of the land, but the cattle of Lot's herdsmen did otherwise, for they were suffered to feed in the fields of the people of the land. And the people of the land saw this occurrence daily, and they came to Abram and quarreled with him on account of Lot's herdsmen. And Abram said to Lot, What is this thou art doing to me, to make me despicable to the inhabitants of the land, that thou orderest thy herdsmen to feed thy cattle in the fields of other people? Dost thou not know that I am a stranger in this land amongst the children of Canaan? And why wilt thou do this unto me? And Abram quarreled daily with Lot on account of this. But Lot would not listen to Abram, and he continued to do the same, and the inhabitants of the land came and told Abram. And Abram said unto Lot, How long wilt thou be to me for a stumbling block with the inhabitants of the land? Now I beseech thee, let there be no more quarreling between us, for we are kinsmen. But I pray thee, separate from me. Go and choose a place where thou mayst dwell with thy cattle, and all belonging to thee, but keep thyself at a distance from me, thou and thy household. And be not afraid in going from me, for if anyone do an injury to thee, let me know, and I will avenge thy cause from him. Only remove from me. And when Abram had spoken all these words to Lot, then Lot arose, and lifted up his eyes toward the plain of Jordan. And he saw that the whole of this place was well watered, and good for man, as well as affording pasture for the cattle. And Lot went from Abram to that place, and he there pitched his tent, and he dwelt in Sodom, and they were separated from each other. And Abram dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and he pitched his tent there, and Abram remained in that place many years. Chapter 16 At that time Chedorlaomer, king of Elam, sent to all the neighboring kings, to Nimrod, king of Shinar, who was then under his power, and to Tidal, king of Goyim, and to Arioch, king of Elisar, with whom he made a covenant, saying, Come up to me and assist me, that we may smite all the towns of Sodom and its inhabitants, for they have rebelled against me these thirteen years. And these four kings went up with all their camps, about eight hundred thousand men, and they went as they were, and smote every man they found in their road. And the five kings of Sodom and Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Adma, Shemeber, king of Zeboim, Bera, king of Sodom, Bersha, king of Gomorrah, and Bela, king of Zoar, went out to meet them, and they all joined together in the valley of Sidim. And these nine kings made war in the valley of Sidim, and the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah were smitten before the kings of Elam. And the valley of Sidim was full of lime pits, and the kings of Elam pursued the kings of Sodom, and the kings of Sodom with their camps fled and fell into the lime pits, and all that remained went to the mountain for safety. And the five kings of Elam came after them and pursued them to the gates of Sodom, and they took all that there was in Sodom. And they plundered all the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, and they also took Lot, Abram's brother's son, and his property, and they seized all the goods of the cities of Sodom, and they went away. And Eunuch, Abram's servant, who was in the battle, saw this, and told Abram all that the kings had done to the cities of Sodom, and that Lot was taken captive by them. And Abram heard this, and he rose up with about three hundred and eighteen men that were with him. And he that night pursued these kings, and smote them. And they all fell before Abram and his men. And there was none remaining but the four kings who fled, and they went each his own road. And Abram recovered all the property of Sodom, and he also recovered Lot and his property, his wives and little ones, and all belonging to him, so that Lot lacked nothing. And when he returned from smiting these kings, he and his men passed the valley of Sidim, where the kings had made war together. And Bera, king of Sodom, and the rest of his men that were with him, went out from the lime pits into which they had fallen to meet Abram and his men. And Adonizedek, king of Jerusalem, the same was Shem, went out with his men to meet Abram and his people, with bread and wine, and they remained together in the valley of Melech. And Adonizedek blessed Abram, 
And Abram gave him a tenth from all that he had brought, from the spoil of his enemies, for Adonizedek was a priest before God. And all the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah who were there, with their servants, approached Abram and begged of him to return their servants, whom he had made captive, and to take unto himself all the property. And Abram answered the kings of Sodom, saying, As the Lord liveth, who created heaven and earth, and who redeemed my soul from all affliction, and who delivered me this day from my enemies, and gave them into my hand, I will not take anything belonging to you, that you may not boast tomorrow, saying, Abram became rich from our property that he saved. For the Lord my God, in whom I trust, said unto me, Thou shalt lack nothing, for I will bless thee in all the works of thy hands. And now, therefore, behold, here is all belonging to you. Take it and go. As the Lord liveth, I will not take from you, from a living soul down to a shoe tie or thread, accepting the expense of the food of those who went out with me to battle, as also the portions of the men who went with me, Anar, Askal, and Mamre, they and their men, as well as those also who had remained to watch the baggage, they shall take their portion of the spoil. And the kings of Sodom gave Abram according to all that he had said, and they pressed him to take of whatever he chose, but he would not. And he sent away the kings of Sodom and the remainder of their men, and he gave them orders about Lot, and they went to their respective places. And Lot, his brother's son, he also sent away with his property, and he went with them, and Lot returned to his home to Sodom, and Abram and his people returned to their home to the plains of Mamre, which is in Hebron. At that time the Lord again appeared to Abram in Hebron, and he said to him, Do not fear, thy reward is very great before me, for I will not leave thee until I shall have multiplied thee and blessed thee and made thy seed like the stars in heaven which cannot be measured nor numbered. And I will give unto thy seed all these lands that thou seest with thine eyes, to them will I give them for an inheritance forever. Only be strong and do not fear, walk before me and be perfect. And in the seventy-eighth year of the life of Abram, in that year died Reu, the son of Peleg, and all the days of Reu were two hundred and thirty-nine years, and he died. And Sarai, the daughter of Haran, Abram's wife, was still barren in those days. She did not bear to Abram, either son or daughter. And when she saw that she bare no children, she took her handmaid, Hagar, whom Pharaoh had given her, and she gave her to Abram her husband for a wife. For Hagar learned all the ways of Sarai, as Sarai taught her. She was not in any way deficient in following her good ways. And Sarai said to Abram, Behold, here is my handmaid, Agar. Go to her, that she may bring forth upon my knees, that I may also obtain children through her. And at the end of ten years of Abram's dwelling in the land of Canaan, which is the eighty-fifth year of Abram's life, Sarai gave Hagar unto him. And Abram hearkened to the voice of his wife Sarai, and he took his handmaid, Hagar, and Abram came to her, and she conceived. And when Hagar saw that she had conceived, she rejoiced greatly, and her mistress was despised in her eyes, and she said within herself, This can only be that I am better before God than Sarai my mistress, for all the days that my mistress has been with my Lord, she did not conceive, but me the Lord has caused in so short a time to conceive by him. And when Sarai saw that Hagar had conceived by Abram, Sarai was jealous of her handmaid, and Sarai said within herself, This is surely nothing else but that she must be better than I am. And Sarai said unto Abram, My wrong be upon thee, for at the time when thou didst pray before the Lord for children, why didst thou not pray on my account that the Lord should give me seed from thee? And when I speak to Hagar in thy presence, she despiseth my words, because she has conceived, and thou wilt say nothing to her. May the Lord judge between me and thee for what thou hast done to me. And Abram said to Sarai, Behold, thy handmaid is in thy hand. Do unto her as it may seem good in thy eyes. And Sarai afflicted her, and Hagar fled from her to the wilderness. And an angel of the Lord found her in the place where she had fled, by a well. And he said to her, Do not fear, for I will multiply thy seed, for thou shalt bear a son, and thou shalt call his name Ishmael. Now then, return to Sarai thy mistress, and submit thyself under her hands. And Hagar called the place of that well, Be'er Lahai Roy. It is between Kadesh and the wilderness of Bered. And Hagar at that time returned to her master's house, and at the end of days, Hagar bare a son to Abram, and Abram called his name Ishmael, and Abram was eighty-six years old when he begat him. Chapter 17 And in those days, in the ninety-first year of the life of Abram, 
the children of Kittim made war with the children of Tubal. For when the Lord had scattered the sons of men upon the face of the earth, the children of Kittim went and embodied themselves in the plain of Canopia, and they built themselves cities there, and dwelt by the river Tibru. And the children of Tubal dwelt in Tuscana, and their boundaries reached the river Tibru. And the children of Tubal built a city in Tiscanan, and they called the name Sabina, after the name of Sabina, son of Tubal their father, and they dwelt there unto this day. And it was at that time the children of Kittim made war with the children of Tubal, and the children of Tubal were smitten before the children of Kittim. And the children of Kittim caused three hundred and seventy men to fall from the children of Tubal. And at that time the children of Tubal swore to the children of Kittim, saying, You shall not intermarry amongst us, and no man shall give his daughter to any of the sons of Kittim. For all the daughters of Tubal were in those days fair, for no women were then found in the whole earth so fair as the daughters of Tubal. And all who delighted in the beauty of women went to the daughters of Tubal and took wives from them. And the sons of men, kings, princes, who greatly delighted in the beauty of women, took wives in those days from the daughters of Tubal. And at the end of three years after the children of Tubal had sworn to the children of Kittim not to give them their daughters for wives, about twenty men of the children of Kittim went to take some of the daughters of Tubal, but they found none. For the children of Tubal kept their oaths not to intermarry with them, and they would not break their oaths. And in the days of harvest, the children of Tubal went into their fields to get in their harvest, when the young men of Kittim assembled and went to the city of Sabina, and each man took a young woman from the daughters of Tubal, and they came to their cities. And the children of Tubal heard of it, and they went to make war with them, and they could not prevail over them, for the mountain was exceedingly high from them, and when they saw they could not prevail over them, they returned to their land. And at the revolution of the year, the children of Tubal went and hired about ten thousand men from those cities that were near them, and they went to war with the children of Kittim. And the children of Tubal went to war with the children of Kittim to destroy their land and to distress them, and in this engagement the children of Tubal prevailed over the children of Kittim, and the children of Kittim, seeing that they were greatly distressed, lifted up the children which they had by the daughters of Tubal, upon the wall which had been built, to be before the eyes of the children of Tubal. And the children of Kittim said to them, Have you come to make war with your own sons and daughters? And have we not been considered your flesh and bones from that time till now? And when the children of Tubal heard this, they ceased to make war with the children of Kittim, and they went away. And they returned to their cities, and the children of Kittim at that time assembled and built two cities by the sea, and they called one Pertu, and the other Ariza. And Abram, the son of Terah, was then ninety-nine years old. At that time the Lord appeared to him, and he said to him, I will make my covenant between me and thee, and I will greatly multiply thy seed, and this is the covenant which I make between me and thee, that every male child be circumcised, thou and thy seed after thee. At eight days old shall it be circumcised, and this covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And now, therefore, thy name shall no more be called Abram, but Abraham, and thy wife shall no more be called Sarai, but Sarah. For I will bless you both, and I will multiply your seed after you, that you shall become a great nation, and kings shall come forth from you. Chapter 18 And Abraham rose and did all that God had ordered him. And he took the men of his household, and those bought with his money, and he circumcised them as the Lord had commanded him. And there was not one left whom he did not circumcise, and Abraham and his son Ishmael were circumcised in the flesh of their foreskin. Thirteen years old was Ishmael when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And in the third day Abraham went out of his tent and sat at the door to enjoy the heat of the sun during the pain of his flesh. And the Lord appeared to him in the plain of Mamre, and sent three of his ministering angels to visit him. And he was sitting at the door of the tent, and he lifted his eyes and saw, and lo, three men were coming from a distance. And he rose up and ran to meet them, and he bowed down to them, and brought them into his house. And he said to them, If now I have found favor in your sight, turn in and eat a morsel of bread. And he pressed them, and they turned in, and he gave them water, and they washed their feet and he placed them under a tree at the door of the tent. And Abraham ran and took a calf, tender and good, and he hastened to kill it, and gave it to his servant Eleazar to dress. And Abraham came to Sarah into the tent, and he said to her, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, 
knead it, and make cakes to cover the pot containing the meat. And she did so. And Abraham hastened and brought before them butter and milk, beef and mutton, and gave it before them to eat before the flesh of the calf was sufficiently done. And they did eat. And when they had done eating, one of them said to him, I will return to thee according to the time of life, and Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And the men afterward departed and went their ways to the places to which they were sent. In those days all the people of Sodom and Gomorrah and of the whole five cities were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord, and they provoked the Lord with their abominations, and they strengthened in aging abominably and scornfully before the Lord, and their wickedness and crimes were in those days great before the Lord. And they had in their land a very extensive valley, about a half day's walk, and in it there were fountains of water and a great deal of herbage surrounding the water. And all the people of Sodom and Gomorrah went there four times in the year, with their wives and children, and all belonging to them, and they rejoiced there with timbrels and dances. And in the time of rejoicing, they would all rise and lay hold of their neighbors' wives, and some, the virgin daughters of their neighbors, and they enjoyed them. And each man saw his wife and daughter in the hands of his neighbor, and did not say a word. And they did so from morning to night. And they afterward returned home each man to his house, and each woman to her tent. So they always did four times in the year. Also, when a stranger came into their cities, and brought goods which he had purchased with a view to dispose of there, the people of these cities would assemble, men, women, and children, young and old, and go to the man and take his goods by force, giving a little to each man until there was an end to all the goods of the owner, which he had brought into the land. And if the owner of the goods quarreled with them, saying, What is this work which you have done to me? Then they would approach him one by one, and each would show him the little which he took and taunt him, saying, I only took that little which thou didst give me. And when he heard this from them all, he would arise and go from them in sorrow and bitterness of soul, when they would all arise and go after him and drive him out of the city with great noise and tumult. And there was a man from the country of Elam who was leisurely going on the road, seated upon his ass, which carried a fine mantle of diverse colors, and the mantle was bound with a cord upon the ass. And the man was on his journey, passing through the street of Sodom, when the sun set in the evening, and he remained there in order to abide during the night, but no one would let him into his house. And at that time there was in Sodom a wicked and mischievous man, one skillful to do evil, and his name was Hadad. And he lifted up his eyes, and saw the traveler in the street of the city. And he came to him and said, Whence comest thou, and whither dost thou go? And the man said to him, I am traveling from Hebron to Elam, where I belong. And as I passed the sun set, and no one would suffer me to enter his house, though I had bread and water, and also straw and provender for my ass, and am short of nothing. And Hadad answered and said to him, All that thou shalt want shall be supplied by me, but in the street thou shalt not abide all night. And Hadad brought him into his house, and he took off the mantle from the ass with the cord, and brought them to his house, and he gave the ass straw and provender, whilst the traveller ate and drank in Hadad's house, and he abode there that night. And in the morning the traveller rose up early to continue his journey, when Hadad said to him, Wait, comfort thy heart with a morsel of bread, and then go. And the man did so, and he remained with him, and they both ate and drank together during the day, when the man rose up to go. And Hadad said to him, Behold, now the day is declining, thou hadst better remain all night, that thy heart may be comforted. And he pressed him so that he tarried there all night. And on the second day he rose up early to go away, when Hadad pressed him, saying, Comfort thy heart with a morsel of bread, and then go. And he remained and ate with him also the second day. And then the man rose up to continue his journey. And Hadad said to him, Behold, now the day is declining. Remain with me to comfort thy heart, and in the morning rise up early and go thy way. And the man would not remain, but rose and saddled his ass. And whilst he was saddling his ass, the wife of Hadad said to her husband, Behold, this man has remained with us for two days, eating and drinking, and he has given us nothing. And now shall he go away from us without giving anything? And Hadad said to her, Be silent. And the man saddled his ass to go, and he asked Hadad to give him the cord and the mantle to tie it upon the ass. And Hadad said to him, What sayest thou? And he said to him, That thou, my lord, shalt give me the cord and the mantle made with diverse colors, which thou didst conceal with thee in thy house to take care of it. And Hadad answered the man, saying, This is the interpretation of thy dream. The cord which thou didst see means that thy life will be lengthened out like a cord, 
and having seen the mantle colored with all sorts of colors, means that thou shalt have a vineyard in which thou wilt plant trees of all fruits. And the traveler answered, saying, Not so, my lord, for I was awake when I gave thee the cord, and also a mantle woven with different colors, which thou didst take off the ass to put them by for me. And Hadad answered and said, Surely I have told thee the interpretation of thy dream, and it is a good dream, and this is the interpretation thereof. Now the sons of men give me four pieces of silver, which is my charge for interpreting dreams, and of thee only I require three pieces of silver. And the man was provoked at the words of Hadad, and he cried bitterly, and he brought Hadad to Sirach, judge of Sodom. And the man laid his cause before Sirach the judge, when Hadad replied, saying, It is not so, but thus the matter stands. And the judge said to the traveler, This man Hadad telleth thee truth, for he is famed in the cities for the accurate interpretation of dreams. And the man cried at the word of the judge, and he said, Not so, my lord, for it was in the day that I gave him the cord and mantle which was upon the ass in order to put them by in his house. And they both disputed before the judge, the one saying, Thus the matter was, and the other declaring otherwise. And Hadad said to the man, Give me four pieces of silver that I charge for my interpretations of dreams. I will not make any allowance, and give me the expense of the four meals that thou didst eat in my house. And the man said to Hadad, Truly I will pay thee for what I ate in thy house, only give me the cord and mantle which thou didst conceal in thy house. And Hadad replied before the judge, and said to the man, Did I not tell thee the interpretation of thy dream? The cord means that thy days shall be prolonged like a cord, and the mantle that thou wilt have a vineyard in which thou wilt plant all kinds of fruit trees. This is the proper interpretation of thy dream. Now give me the four pieces of silver that I require as a compensation, for I will make thee no allowance. And the man cried at the words of Hadad, and they both quarreled before the judge, and the judge gave orders to his servants, who drove them rashly from the house. And they went away quarreling from the judge, when the people of Sodom heard them, and they gathered about them, and they exclaimed against the stranger, and they drove him rashly from the city. And the man continued his journey upon his ass, with bitterness of soul, lamenting and weeping. And whilst he was going alone, he wept at what had happened to him in the corrupt city of Sodom. Chapter 19 And the cities of Sodom had four judges to four cities, and these were their names, Serach in the city of Sodom, Sharkad in Gomorrah, Zabnak in Adma, and Manon in Zebuim. And Eleazar, Abraham's servant, applied to them different names, and he converted Serach to Shakra, Sharkad to Shakura, Zebnak to Kezobim, and Manon to Matladin. And by desire of their four judges, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah had beds erected in the streets of the cities, and if a man came to these places, they laid hold of him and brought him to one of their beds, and by force made him to lie in them. And as he lay down, three men would stand at his head and three at his feet, and measure him by the length of the bed. And if the man was less than the bed, these six men would stretch him at each end, and when he cried out to them, they would not answer him. And if he was longer than the bed, they would draw together the two sides of the bed at each end until the man had reached the gates of death. And if he continued to cry out to them, they would answer him, saying, Thus shall it be done to a man that cometh into our land. And when men heard all these things that the people of the cities of Sodom did, they refrained from coming there. And when a poor man came to their land, they would give him silver and gold, and cause a proclamation in the whole city not to give him a morsel of bread to eat. And if the stranger should remain there some days, and die from hunger, not having been able to obtain a morsel of bread, then at his death all the people of the city would come and take their silver and gold which they had given him. And those that could recognize the silver or gold which they had given him took it back, and at his death they also stripped him of his garments, and they would fight about them, and he that prevailed over his neighbor took them. They would after that carry him and bury him under some of the shrubs in the deserts, so they did all the days to any one that came to Shem and died in their land. And in the course of time, Sarah sent Eleazar to Sodom to see Lot and inquire after his welfare. And Eleazar went to Sodom, and he met a man of Sodom fighting with a stranger, and the man of Sodom stripped the poor man of all his clothes and went away. And this poor man cried to Eleazar and supplicated his favor on account of what the man of Sodom had done to him. And he said to him, why dost thou act thus to the poor man who came to thy land? And the man of Sodom answered Eleazar, saying, Is this man thy brother? Or have the people of Sodom made thee a judge this day that thou speakest about this man? 
And Eleazar strove with the man of Sodom on account of the poor man. And when Eleazar approached to recover the poor man's clothes from the man of Sodom, he hastened and with a stone smote Eleazar in the forehead. And the blood flowed copiously from Eleazar's forehead, and when the man saw the blood, he caught hold of Eleazar, saying, Give me my hire for having rid thee of this bad blood that was in thy forehead, for such is the custom and the law in our land. And Eleazar said to him, Thou hast wounded me, and requirest me to pay thee thy hire. And Eleazar would not hearken to the words of the man of Sodom. And the man laid hold of Eleazar, and brought him to Shakra the judge of Sodom for judgment. And the man spoke to the judge, saying, I beseech thee, my lord, thus has this man done, for I smote him with a stone, that the blood flowed from his forehead, and he is unwilling to give me my hire. And the judge said to Eleazar, This man speaketh truth to thee, give him his hire, for this is the custom in our land. And Eleazar heard the words of the judge, and he lifted up a stone, and smote the judge, and the stone struck on his forehead, and the blood flowed copiously from the forehead of the judge. And Eleazar said, If this then is the custom in your land, give thou unto this man what I should have given him, for this has been thy decision, thou didst decree it. And Eleazar left the man of Sodom with the judge, and he went away. And when the kings of Elam had made war with the kings of Sodom, the kings of Elam captured all the property of Sodom, and they took Lot captive with his property. And when it was told to Abraham, he went and made war with the kings of Elam, and he recovered from their hands all the property of Lot as well as the property of Sodom. At that time the wife of Lot bare him a daughter, and he called her name Palteth, saying, Because God had delivered him and his whole household from the kings of Elam, and Palteth, daughter of Lot, grew up, and one of the men of Sodom took her for a wife. And a poor man came into the city to seek a maintenance, and he remained in the city some days, and all the people of Sodom caused a proclamation of their custom not to give this man a morsel of bread to eat until he dropped dead upon the earth, and they did so. And Palteth, the daughter of Lot, saw this man lying in the streets, starved with hunger, and no one would give him anything to keep him alive, and he was just upon the point of death. And her soul was filled with pity on account of the man, and she fed him secretly with bread for many days, and the soul of this man was revived. For when she went forth to fetch water, she would put the bread in the water pitcher, and when she came to the place where the poor man was, she took the bread from the pitcher and gave it him to eat. So she did many days. And all the people of Sodom and Gomorrah wondered how this man could bear starvation for so many days, and they said to each other, This can only be that he eats and drinks, for no man can bear starvation for so many days or live as this man has, without even his countenance changing. And three men concealed themselves in a place where the poor man was stationed, to know who it was that brought him bread to eat. And Palteth, daughter of Lot, went forth that day to fetch water, and she put bread into her pitcher of water, and she went to draw water by the poor man's place, and she took out the bread from the pitcher, and gave it to the poor man, and he ate it. And the three men saw what Palteth did to the poor man, and they said to her, It is thou then who hast supported him, and therefore he has not starved, nor changed in appearance, nor died like the rest. And the three men went out of the place in which they were concealed, and they seized Palteth and the bread which was in the poor man's hand. And they took Palteth and brought her before their judges, and they said to them, Thus did she do, and it is she who supplied the poor man with bread, therefore he did not die all this time. Now therefore declare to us the punishment due to this woman for having transgressed our law. And the people of Sodom and Gomorrah assembled and kindled the fire in the street of the city, and they took the woman and cast her into the fire, and she was burned to ashes. And in the city of Adma there was a woman to whom they did the like. For a traveler came into the city of Adma to abide there all night, with the intention of going home in the morning, and he sat opposite the door of the house of the young woman's father to remain there, as the sun had set when he had reached that place. And the young woman saw him sitting by the door of the house. And he asked her for a drink of water, and she said to him, Who art thou? And he said to her, I was this day going on the road, and reach here when the sun set, so I will abide here all night, and in the morning I will arise early and continue my journey. And the young woman went into the house and fetched the man bread and water to eat and drink. And this affair became known to the people of Adma, and they assembled and brought the young woman before the judges that they should judge her for this act. And the judge said, The judgment of death must pass upon this woman because she transgressed our law, and this therefore is the decision concerning her. 
And the people of those cities assembled and brought out the young woman, and anointed her with honey from head to foot, as the judge had decreed. And they placed her before a swarm of bees, which were in their hives. And the bees flew upon her, and stung her, that her whole body was swelled. And the young woman cried out on account of the bees, but no one took notice of her, or pitied her, and her cries ascended to heaven. And the Lord was provoked at this, and at all the works of the cities of Sodom, for they had abundance of food, and had tranquility amongst them, and still would not sustain the poor and the needy. And in those days their evil doings and sins became great before the Lord. And the Lord sent for two of the angels that had come to Abraham's house to destroy Sodom and its cities. And the angels rose up from the door of Abraham's tent after they had eaten and drunk, and they reached Sodom in the evening, and Lot was then sitting in the gate of Sodom. And when he saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed down to the ground. And he pressed them greatly, and brought them into his house, and he gave them victuals which they ate, and they abode all night in his house. And the angel said to Lot, Arise, go forth from this place, thou and all belonging to thee, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of this city, for the Lord will destroy this place. And the angels laid hold upon the hand of Lot, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hands of his children, and all belonging to him, and they brought him forth, and set him without the cities. And they said to Lot, Escape for thy life, and he fled, and all belonging to him. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom, and upon Gomorrah, and upon all these cities brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew these cities, all the plain, and all the inhabitants of the cities, and that which grew upon the ground. And Ado, the wife of Lot, looked back to see the destruction of the cities, for her compassion was moved on account of her daughters who remained in Sodom, for they did not go with her. And when she looked back, she became a pillar of salt, and it is yet in that place unto this day. And the oxen which stood in that place daily licked up the salt to the extremities of their feet, and in the morning it would spring forth afresh, and they again licked it up unto this day. And Lot and two of his daughters that remained with him fled and escaped to the cave of Adulam, and they remained there for some time. And Abraham rose up early in the morning to see what had been done to the cities of Sodom, and he looked and beheld the smoke of the cities going up like the smoke of a furnace. And Lot and his two daughters remained in the cave, and they made their father drink wine, and they lay with him, for they said there was no man upon earth that could raise up seed from them, for they thought that the whole earth was destroyed. And they both lay with their father, and they conceived and bare sons, and the firstborn called the name of her son Moab, saying, From my father did I conceive him, he is the father of the Moabites unto this day. And the younger also called her son Benami, he is the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. And after this Lot and his two daughters went away from there, and he dwelt on the other side of the Jordan with his two daughters and their sons, and the sons of Lot grew up, and they went and took themselves wives from the land of Canaan, and they begat children, and they were fruitful and multiplied. Chapter 20 And at that time Abraham journeyed from the plain of Mamre, and he went to the land of the Philistines, and he dwelt in Gerar. It was in the twenty-fifth year of Abraham's being in the land of Canaan, and the hundredth year of the life of Abraham, that he came to Gerar in the land of the Philistines. And when they entered the land, he said to Sarah his wife, Say thou art my sister, to any one that shall ask thee, in order that we may escape the evil of the inhabitants of the land. And as Abraham was dwelling in the land of the Philistines, the servants of Abimelech, king of the Philistines, saw that Sarah was exceedingly beautiful, and they asked Abraham concerning her, and he said, She is my sister. And the servants of Abimelech went to Abimelech, saying, A man from the land of Canaan is come to dwell in the land, and he has a sister that is exceeding fair. And Abimelech heard the words of his servants, who praised Sarah to him. And Abimelech sent his officers, and they brought Sarah to the king. And Sarah came to the house of Abimelech, and the king saw that Sarah was beautiful, and she pleased him exceedingly. And he approached her, and said to her, What is that man to thee with whom thou didst come to our land? And Sarah answered, and said, He is my brother. And we came from the land of Canaan to dwell wherever we could find a place. And Abimelech said to Sarah, Behold, my land is before thee. Place thy brother in any part of this land that pleases thee, and it will be our duty to exalt and elevate him above all the people of the land, since he is thy brother. And Abimelech sent for Abraham, and Abraham came to Abimelech. And Abimelech said to Abraham, Behold, I have given orders that thou shalt be honored 
as thou desirest on account of thy sister Sarah. And Abraham went forth from the king, and the king's present followed him. As at evening time, before men lie down to rest, the king was sitting upon his throne, and a deep sleep fell upon him, and he lay upon the throne and slept till morning. And he dreamed that an angel of the Lord came to him with a drawn sword in his hand, and the angel stood over Abimelech and wished to slay him with the sword, and the king was terrified in his dream, and said to the angel, In what have I sinned against thee, that thou comest to slay me with thy sword? And the angel answered and said to Abimelech, Behold, thou diest on account of the woman which thou didst yesternight bring to thy house, for she is a married woman, the wife of Abraham, who came to thy house. Now therefore return that man his wife, for she is his wife, and shouldst thou not return her? Know that thou wilt surely die, thou and all belonging to thee. And on that night there was a great outcry in the land of the Philistines, and the inhabitants of the land saw the figure of the man standing with a drawn sword in his hand, and he smote the inhabitants of the land with the sword, yea, he continued to smite them. And the angel of the Lord smote the whole land of the Philistines on that night, and there was a great confusion on that night and on the following morning. And every womb was closed, and all their issues, and the hand of the Lord was upon them on account of Sarah, wife of Abraham, whom Abimelech had taken. And in the morning Abimelech rose with terror and confusion and with great dread, and he sent and had his servants called in, and he related his dream to them, and the people were greatly afraid. And one man standing amongst the servants of the king answered the king, saying, O sovereign king, restore this woman to her husband, for he is her husband, for the like happened to the king of Egypt when this man came to Egypt. And he said concerning his wife, She is my sister, for such is his manner of doing when he cometh to dwell in the land in which he is a stranger. And Pharaoh sent and took this woman for a wife, and the Lord brought upon him grievous plagues until he returned the woman to her husband. Now therefore, O sovereign king, know what happened yesternight to the whole land, for there was a very great consternation and a great pain and lamentation, and we know that it was on account of the woman which thou didst take. Now therefore, restore this woman to her husband, lest it should befall us as it did to Pharaoh king of Egypt and his subjects, and that we may not die. And Abimelech hastened, and called, and had Sarah called for, and she came before him, and he had Abraham called for, and he came before him. And Abimelech said to them, What is this work you have been doing in saying you are brother and sister, and I took this woman for a wife? And Abraham said, Because I thought I should suffer death on account of my wife. And Abimelech took flocks and herds, and men servants and maidservants, and a thousand pieces of silver, and he gave them to Abraham, and he returned Sarah to him. And Abimelech said to Abraham, Behold, the whole land is before thee, dwell in it wherever thou shalt choose. And Abraham and Sarah his wife went forth from the king's presence with honor and respect, and they dwelt in the land, even in Gerar. And all the inhabitants of the land of the Philistines and the king's servants were still in pain through the plague which the angel had inflicted upon them the whole night on account of Sarah. And Abimelech sent for Abraham, saying, Pray now for thy servants to the Lord thy God, that he may put away this mortality from amongst us. And Abraham prayed on account of Abimelech and his subjects. And the Lord heard the prayer of Abraham, and he healed Abimelech and his subjects. Chapter 21 And it was at that time, at the end of a year and four months of Abraham's dwelling in the land of the Philistines in Gerar, that God visited Sarah, and the Lord remembered her, and she conceived and bare a son to Abraham. And Abraham called the name of his son, which was born to him, which Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son, Isaac, at eight days old, as God had commanded Abraham to do unto his seed after him. And Abraham was one hundred, and Sarah ninety years old, when Isaac was born to them. And the child grew up, and he was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast upon the day that Isaac was weaned. And Shem, and Eber, and all the great people of the land, and Abimelech, king of the Philistines, and his servants, and Phicol, the captain of his host, came to eat and drink, and rejoice at the feast which Abraham made upon the day of his son Isaac's being weaned. And Terah and Nahor rejoiced with Abraham, and they remained with him many days in the land of the Philistines. At that time, Serug, the son of Reu, died in the first year of the birth of Isaac, son of Abraham. And all the days of Serug were two hundred and thirty-nine years, and he died. And Ishmael, the son of Abraham, was grown up in those days. He was fourteen years old when Sarah bare Isaac to Abraham. 
and God was with Ishmael, the son of Abraham, and he grew up, and he learned to use the bow, and he became an archer. And when Isaac was five years old, he was sitting with Ishmael at the door of the tent. And Ishmael came to Isaac and seated himself opposite to him, and he took the bow and drew it and put the arrow in it, and intended to slay Isaac. And Sarah saw the act which Ishmael desired to do to her son Isaac, and it grieved her exceedingly on account of her son. And she sent for Abraham and said to him, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for her son shall not be heir with my son, for thus did he seek to do unto him this day. And Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarah, and he rose up early in the morning, and he took twelve loaves and a bottle of water, which he gave to Hagar, and sent her away with her son. And Hagar went with her son to the wilderness, and they dwelt in the wilderness of Paran, with the inhabitants of the wilderness, and Ishmael was an archer, and he dwelt in the wilderness a long time. And he and his mother afterward went to the land of Egypt, and they dwelt there, and Hagar took a wife for her son from Egypt, and her name was Meribah. And the wife of Ishmael conceived and bare four sons and two daughters. And Ishmael and his mother and his wife and children afterward went and returned to the wilderness. And they made themselves tents in the wilderness in which they dwelt, and they continued to travel and then to rest monthly and yearly. And God gave Ishmael flocks and herds and tents on account of Abraham his father, and the man increased in cattle. And Ishmael dwelt in deserts and in tents, traveling and resting for a long time and he did not see the face of his father. And in some time after, Abraham said to his wife, I will go and see my son Ishmael, for I have a desire to see him, for I have not seen him for a long time. And Abraham rode upon one of his camels to the wilderness to seek his son Ishmael, for he heard that he was dwelling in a tent in the wilderness with all belonging to him. And Abraham went to the wilderness, and he reached the tent of Ishmael about noon, and he asked after Ishmael, and he found the wife of Ishmael sitting in the tent with her children, and Ishmael her husband, and his mother were not with them. And Abraham asked the wife of Ishmael, saying, Where has Ishmael gone? And she said, He has gone to the field to hunt. And Abraham was still mounted upon the camel, for he would not get off to the ground, as he had sworn to his wife Sarah that he would not get off from the camel. And Abraham said to Ishmael's wife, My daughter, give me a little water that I may drink, for I am fatigued from the journey. And Ishmael's wife answered and said to Abraham, We have neither water nor bread. And she continued sitting in the tent, and did not notice Abraham, neither did she ask him who he was. But she was beating her children in the tent, and she was cursing them. And she also cursed her husband Ishmael, and reproached him. And Abraham heard the words of Ishmael's wife to her children, and he was very angry and displeased. And Abraham called to the woman to come out to him from the tent, and the woman came and stood opposite to Abraham, for Abraham was still mounted upon the camel. And Abraham said to Ishmael's wife, When thy husband Ishmael returneth home, say these words to him, A very old man from the land of the Philistines came hither to seek thee, and thus was his appearance and figure. I did not ask him who he was, and seeing thou wast not here, he spoke unto me and said, When Ishmael thy husband returneth, tell him thus did this man say, When thou comest home, put away this nail of the tent, which thou hast placed here, and place another nail in its stead. And Abraham finished his instructions to the woman, and he turned and went off on the camel homeward. And after that, Ishmael came from the chase, he and his mother, and returned to the tent, and his wife spoke these words to him. A very old man from the land of the Philistines came to seek thee, and thus was his appearance and figure. I did not ask him who he was, and seeing thou wast not at home, he said to me, When thy husband cometh home, tell him, Thus said the old man, Put away the nail of the tent which thou hast placed here, and place another nail in its stead. And Ishmael heard the words of his wife, and he knew that it was his father, and that his wife did not honor him. And Ishmael understood his father's words that he had spoken to his wife, and Ishmael hearkened to the voice of his father, and Ishmael cast off that woman, and she went away. And Ishmael afterward went to the land of Canaan, and he took another wife, and he brought her to his tent to the place where he then dwelt. And at the end of three years Abraham said, I will go again and see Ishmael my son, for I have not seen him for a long time. And he rode upon his camel and went to the wilderness, and he reached the tent of Ishmael about noon. And he asked after Ishmael, and his wife came out of the tent, and she said, He is not here, my lord, for he has gone to hunt in the fields and to feed the camels. And the woman said to Abraham, Turn in, my lord, into the tent, and eat a morsel of bread, for thy soul must be wearied on account of the journey. And Abraham said to her, I will not stop, 
for I am in haste to continue my journey. But give me a little water to drink, for I have thirst. And the woman hastened and ran into the tent, and she brought out water and bread to Abraham, which she placed before him, and she urged him to eat. And he ate and drank, and his heart was comforted, and he blessed his son Ishmael. And he finished his meal, and he blessed the Lord, and he said to Ishmael's wife, When Ishmael cometh home, say these words to him, A very old man from the land of the Philistines came hither, and asked after thee, and thou wast not here. And I brought him out bread and water, and he ate and drank, and his heart was comforted. And he spoke these words to me, When Ishmael thy husband cometh home, say unto him, The nail of the tent which thou hast is very good, do not put it away from the tent. And Abraham finished commanding the woman, and he rode off to his home to the land of the Philistines. And when Ishmael came to his tent, his wife went forth to meet him, with joy and a cheerful heart. And she said to him, An old man came here from the land of the Philistines, and thus was his appearance. And he asked after thee, and thou wast not here. So I brought out bread and water, and he ate and drank, and his heart was comforted. And he spoke these words to me, When Ishmael thy husband cometh home, say to him, The nail of the tent which thou hast is very good, do not put it away from the tent. And Ishmael knew that it was his father, and that his wife had honored him, and the Lord blessed Ishmael. Chapter 22 and Ishmael then rose up, and took his wife and his children, and his cattle, and all belonging to him. And he journeyed from there, and he went to his father in the land of the Philistines. And Abraham related to Ishmael, his son, the transaction with the first wife that Ishmael took, according to what she did. And Ishmael and his children dwelt with Abraham many days in that land. And Abraham dwelt in the land of the Philistines a long time. And the days increased, and reached twenty-six years, and after that... Abraham, with his servants, and all belonging to him, went from the land of the Philistines, and removed to a great distance, and they came near to Hebron, and they remained there, and the servants of Abraham dug wells of water, and Abraham, and all belonging to him, dwelt by the water, and the servants of Abimelech, king of the Philistines, heard the report that Abraham's servants had dug wells of water in the borders of the land. And they came, and quarreled with the servants of Abraham, and they robbed them of the great well which they had dug. And Abimelech, king of the Philistines, heard of this affair. And he, with Phicol, the captain of his host, and twenty of his men came to Abraham. And Abimelech spoke to Abraham concerning his servants. And Abraham rebuked Abimelech concerning the well of which his servants had robbed him. And Abimelech said to Abraham, As the Lord liveth, who created the whole earth, I did not hear of the act which my servants did unto thy servants until this day. And Abraham took seven ewe lambs and gave them to Abimelech, saying, Take these, I pray thee, from my hands, that it may be a testimony for me that I dug this well. And Abimelech took the seven ewe lambs which Abraham had given to him, for he had also given him cattle and herds in abundance, and Abimelech swore to Abraham concerning the well. Therefore he called that well Beersheba, for there they both swore concerning it. And they both made a covenant in Beersheba, and Abimelech rose up with Phicol, the captain of his host, and all his men, and they returned to the land of the Philistines. And Abraham, and all belonging to him, dwelt in Beersheba, and he was in that land a long time. And Abraham planted a large grove in Beersheba, and he made to it four gates facing the four sides of the earth, and he planted a vineyard in it, so that if a traveler came to Abraham, he entered any gate which was in his road, and remained there, and ate, and drank, and satisfied himself, and then departed. For the house of Abraham was always open to the sons of men that passed and repassed, who came daily to eat and drink in the house of Abraham. And any man who had hunger, and came to Abraham's house, Abraham would give him bread that he might eat and drink and be satisfied. And any one that came naked to his house, he would clothe with garments, as he might choose, and give him silver and gold, and make known to him the Lord who had created him in the earth. This did Abraham all his life. And Abraham and his children, and all belonging to him, dwelt in Beersheba, and he pitched his tent as far as Hebron. And Abraham's brother Nahor, and his father, and all belonging to them, dwelt in Haran, for they did not come with Abraham to the land of Canaan. And children were born to Nahor, which Milcah the daughter of Haran, and sister to Sarah, Abraham's wife, bare to him. And these are the names of those that were born to him, Uz, Buz, Kemuel, Kised, Chazo, Pildash, Tidlaf, and Bethuel, being eight sons, these are the children of Milcah, which she bare to Nahor, Abraham's brother. And Nahor had a concubine, and her name was Rumah, 
and she also bare to Nahor, Zebak, Gakhash, Takhash, and Maasha, being four sons. And the children that were born to Nahor were twelve sons besides his daughters, and they also had children born to them in Haran. And the children of Uz, the firstborn of Nahor, were Abai, Cheref, Gadin, Melis, and Deborah their sister. And the sons of Buz were Barakel, Naamoth, Shiva, and Madanu. And the sons of Kemuel were Aram and Rechab. And the sons of Kesed were Anamalek, Mishai, Banan, and Yephi. And the sons of Chazo were Pildash, Mikai, and Ophir. And the sons of Pildash were Arud, Chamum, Mered, and Moloch. And the sons of Tidlaf were Mushan, Cushan, and Mutsai. And the sons of Bethuel were Sikar, Laban, and their sister Rebekah. These are the families of the children of Nahor that were born to them in Haran. And Aram, the son of Kemuel, and Rechab, his brother, went away from Haran, and they found a valley in the land by the river Euphrates. And they built a city there, and they called the name of the city after the name of Pethor, the son of Aram, that is Aram Nahiraim unto this day. And the children of Kesed also went to dwell where they could find a place. And they went and they found a valley opposite to the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they there built themselves a city. And they called the name at the city Kesed after the name of their father, that is the land of Kasdim unto this day. And the Kasdim dwelt in that land, and they were fruitful and multiplied exceedingly. And Tira, the father of Nahor and Abraham, went and took another wife in his old age, and her name was Pelilah, and she conceived and bare him a son, and he called his name Zobah. And Terah lived twenty-five years after he begat Zobah. And Terah died in that year, that is in the thirty-fifth year of the birth of Isaac, son of Abraham. And the days of Terah were two hundred and five years, and he was buried in Haran. And Zobah, the son of Terah, lived thirty years, and he begat Aram, Aklis, and Merik. And Aram, son of Zobah, son of Terah, had three wives, and he begat twelve sons and three daughters. And the Lord gave to Aram, the son of Zobah, riches and possessions, and abundance of cattle, and flocks, and herds, and the man increased greatly. And Aram, the son of Zobah, and his brother, and all his household journeyed from Haran, and they went to dwell where they should find a place, for their property was too great to remain in Haran, for they could not stop in Haran together with their brethren, the children of Nahor. And Aram, the son of Zobah, went with his brethren, and they found a valley at a distance toward the eastern country, and they dwelt there. And they also built a city there, and they called the name thereof Aram, after the name of their eldest brother, that is Aram Zobah, to this day. And Isaac the son of Abraham was growing up in those days, and Abraham his father taught him the way of the Lord, to know the Lord, and the Lord was with him. And when Isaac was thirty-seven years old, Ishmael his brother was going about with him in the tent. And Ishmael boasted of himself to Isaac, saying, I was thirteen years old when the Lord spoke to my father to circumcise us, and I did according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke to my father, and I gave my soul unto the Lord, and I did not transgress his word which he commanded my father. And Isaac answered Ishmael, saying, Why dost thou boast to me about this, about a little bit of thy flesh, which thou didst take from thy body, concerning which the Lord commanded thee? As the Lord liveth, the God of my father Abraham, if the Lord should say unto my father, Take now thy son Isaac, and bring him up an offering before me, I would not refrain, but I would joyfully accede to it. And the Lord heard the word that Isaac spoke to Ishmael, and it seemed good in the sight of the Lord, and he thought to try Abraham in this matter. And the day arrived when the sons of God came and placed themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with the sons of God before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord, and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said to Satan, What is thy word to me concerning all the children of the earth? And Satan answered the Lord and said, I have seen all the children of the earth who serve thee, and remember thee when they require anything from thee. And when thou givest them the thing which they require from thee, they sit at their ease, and forsake thee, and they remember thee no more. Hast thou seen Abraham the son of Terah, who at first had no children, and he served thee, and erected altars to thee wherever he came? and he brought up offerings upon them, and he proclaimed thy name continually to all the children of the earth? 
And now that his son Isaac is born to him, he has forsaken thee. He has made a great feast for all the inhabitants of the land, and the Lord he has forgotten. For amidst all that he has done, he brought thee no offering, neither burnt offering, nor peace offering, neither ox, lamb, nor goat, of all that he killed on the day that his son was weaned. Even from the time of his son's birth till now, being thirty-seven years, he built no altar before thee, nor brought any offering to thee. For he saw that thou didst give what he requested before thee, and he therefore forsook thee. And the Lord said to Satan, Hast thou thus considered my servant Abraham? For there is none like him upon earth, a perfect and upright man before me, one that feareth God and avoideth evil. As I live, where I say unto him, Bring up Isaac thy son before me, he would not withhold him from me, much more if I told him to bring up a burnt offering before me from his flock or herds. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Speak then now unto Abraham, as thou hast said, and thou wilt see whether he will not this day transgress and cast aside thy words. Chapter 23 At that time the word of the Lord came to Abraham, and he said unto him, Abraham! And he said, Here I am. And he said to him, Take now thy son, thine only son whom thou lovest, even Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which shall be shown to thee. For there wilt thou see a cloud in the glory of the Lord. And Abraham said within himself, How shall I separate my son Isaac from Sarah his mother, in order to bring him up for a burnt offering before the Lord? And Abraham came into the tent, and he sat before Sarah his wife, and he spoke these words to her. My son Isaac is grown up, and he has not for some time studied the service of his God. Now tomorrow I will go and bring him to Shem, and Eber his son, and there he will learn the ways of the Lord, for they will teach him to know the Lord, as well as when to know that when he prayeth continually before the Lord, he will answer him. Therefore he will know the way of serving the Lord his God. And Sarah said, Thou hast spoken well. Go, my Lord, and do unto him as thou hast said, but remove him not at a great distance from me, neither let him remain there too long, for my soul is bound within his soul. And Abraham said unto Sarah, My daughter, let us pray to the Lord our God, that he may do good with us. And Sarah took her son Isaac, and he abode all that night with her, and she kissed and embraced him, and gave him instructions till morning. And she said to him, O my son, how can my soul separate itself from thee? And she still kissed him and embraced him, and she gave Abraham instructions concerning him. And Sarah said to Abraham, O my Lord, I pray thee, take heed of thy son, and place thine eyes over him, for I have no other son nor daughter but him. O oh, forsake him not, if he be hungry, give him bread, and if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. Do not let him go on foot, neither let him sit in the sun, neither let him go by himself in the road, neither force him from whatever he may desire, but do unto him as he may say to thee. And Sarah wept bitterly the whole night on account of Isaac, and she gave him instructions till morning. And in the morning Sarah selected a very fine and beautiful garment from those garments which she had in the house that Abimelech had given to her. And she dressed Isaac her son therewith, and she put a turban upon his head, and she enclosed a precious stone in the top of the turban, and she gave them provision for the road, and they went forth, and Isaac went with his father Abraham, and some of their servants accompanied them to see them off the road. And Sarah went out with them, and she accompanied them upon the road to see them off, and they said to her, Return to the tent. And when Sarah heard the words of her son Isaac, she wept bitterly, and Abraham her husband wept with her and their son wept with them a great weeping. Also those who went with them wept greatly. And Sarah caught hold of her son Isaac, and she held him in her arms, and she embraced him, and continued to weep with him. And Sarah said, Who knoweth if after this day I shall ever see thee again? And they still wept together, Abraham, Sarah, and Isaac, and all those that accompanied them on the road wept with them. And Sarah afterward turned away from her son, weeping bitterly, and all her men-servants and maid-servants returned with her to the tent. And Abraham went with Isaac his son to bring him up as an offering before the Lord, as he had commanded him. And Abraham took two of his young men with him, Ishmael the son of Hagar, and Eleazar his servant, and they went together with them. And whilst they were walking in the road, the young men spoke these words to themselves. And Ishmael said to Eleazar, now my father Abraham is going with Isaac to bring him up for a burnt offering to the Lord, as he commanded him. Now when he returneth, he will give unto me all that he possesses to inherit after him, for I am his firstborn. And Eleazar answered Ishmael and said, 
Surely Abraham did cast thee away with thy mother, and swear that thou shouldst not inherit anything of all he possesses, and to whom will he give all that he has, with all his treasures, but unto me his servant, who has been faithful in his house, who has served him night and day, and has done all that he desired me. To me will he bequeath at his death all that he possesses. And whilst Abraham was proceeding with his son Isaac along the road, Satan came and appeared to Abraham in the figure of a very aged man, humble and of contrite spirit. And he approached Abraham and said to him, Art thou silly or brutish, that thou goest to do this thing this day to thine only son? For God gave thee a son in thy latter days, in thy old age. And wilt thou go and slaughter him this day, because he committed no violence? And wilt thou cause the soul of thine only son to perish from the earth? Dost thou not know and understand that this thing cannot be from the Lord? For the Lord cannot do unto man such evil upon earth, to say to him, Go slaughter thy child. And Abraham heard this, and knew that it was the word of Satan, who endeavored to draw him aside from the way of the Lord. But Abraham would not hearken to the voice of Satan, and Abraham rebuked him, so that he went away. And Satan returned, and came to Isaac, and he appeared unto Isaac in the figure of a young man, comely and well favored. And he approached Isaac, and said unto him, Dost thou not know and understand that thy old silly father bringeth thee to the slaughter this day for naught? Now therefore, my son, do not listen nor attend to him, for he is a silly old man, and let not thy precious soul and beautiful figure be lost from the earth. And Isaac heard this, and said unto Abraham, Hast thou heard, my father, that which this man has spoken? Even thus has he spoken. And Abraham answered his son Isaac, and said to him, Take heed of him, and do not listen to his words, nor attend to him, for he is Satan, endeavoring to draw us aside this day from the commands of God. And Abraham still rebuked Satan, and Satan went from them. And seeing he could not prevail over them, he hid himself from them, and he went and passed before them in the road, and he transformed himself to a large brook of water in the road. And Abraham and Isaac and his two young men reached that place, and they saw a brook large and powerful as the mighty waters. And they entered the brook and passed through it, and the waters at first reached their legs. And when they went deeper in the brook, and the waters reached up to their necks, they were all terrified on account of the water. And whilst they were going over the brook, Abraham recognized that place, and he knew that there was no water there before. And Abraham said to his son Isaac, I know this place in which there was no brook, nor water. Now therefore it is this Satan who does all this to us, to draw us aside this day from the commands of God. And Abraham rebuked him and said unto him, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan, be gone from us, for we go by the commands of God. And Satan was terrified at the voice of Abraham, and he went away from them, and the place again became dry land as it was at first. And Abraham went with Isaac toward the place that God had told him. And on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes, and saw the place at a distance which God had told him of. And a pillar of fire appeared to him that reached from the earth to heaven, and a cloud of glory upon the mountain, and the glory of the Lord was seen in the cloud. And Abraham said to Isaac, My son, dost thou see in that mountain, which we perceive at a distance, that which I see upon it? And Isaac answered and said unto his father, I see, and lo, a pillar of fire and a cloud, and the glory of the Lord is seen upon the cloud. And Abraham knew that his son Isaac was accepted before the Lord for a burnt offering. And Abraham said unto Eleazar and unto Ishmael his son, Do you also see that which we see upon the mountain which is at a distance? And they answered and said, We see nothing more than like other mountains of the earth. And Abraham knew that they were not accepted before the Lord to go with them. And Abraham said to them, Abide ye here with the ass, whilst I and Isaac my son will go to yonder mount and worship there before the Lord, and then return to you. And Eleazar and Ishmael remained in that place, as Abraham had commanded. And Abraham took wood for a burnt offering, and placed it upon his son Isaac. And he took the fire and the knife, and they both went to that place. And when they were going along, Isaac said to his father, Behold, I see here the fire and wood, and where then is the lamb that is to be the burnt offering before the Lord? And Abraham answered his son Isaac, saying, The Lord has made choice of thee, my son, to be a perfect burnt offering instead of the lamb. And Isaac said unto his father, I will do all that the Lord spoke to thee with joy and cheerfulness of heart. And Abraham again said unto Isaac his son, Is there in thy heart any thought or counsel concerning this which is not proper? Tell me, my son, I pray thee. O my son, conceal it not from me. And Isaac answered his father Abraham and said unto him, O my father, as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, there is nothing in my heart to cause me to deviate either to the right or to the left from the word that he has spoken to thee. 
Neither limb nor muscle has moved or stirred at this, nor is there in my heart any thought or evil counsel concerning this. But I am of joyful and cheerful heart in this matter, and I say, Blessed is the Lord who has this day chosen me to be a burnt offering before him. And Abraham greatly rejoiced at the words of Isaac, and they went on and came together to that place that the Lord had spoken of. And Abraham approached to build the altar in that place, and Abraham was weeping, and Isaac took stones and mortar until they had finished building the altar. And Abraham took the wood and placed it in order upon the altar which he had built. And he took his son Isaac and bound him in order to place him upon the wood which was upon the altar to slay him for a burnt offering before the Lord. And Isaac said to his father, Bind me securely, and then place me upon the altar, lest I should turn and move, and break loose from the force of the knife upon my flesh, and thereof profane the burnt offering. And Abraham did so. And Isaac still said to his father, O my father, when thou shalt have slain me, and burnt me for an offering, take with thee that which shall remain of my ashes, to bring to Sarah my mother, and say to her, This is the sweet-smelling savour of Isaac, but do not tell her this, if she should sit near a well or upon any high place, lest she should cast her soul after me and die. And Abraham heard the words of Isaac, and he lifted up his voice and wept when Isaac spake these words. And Abraham's tears gushed down upon Isaac his son, and Isaac wept bitterly, and he said to his father, Hasten thou, O my father, and do with me the will of the Lord our God, as he has commanded thee. And the hearts of Abraham and Isaac rejoiced at this thing which the Lord had commanded them, but the eye wept bitterly, whilst the heart rejoiced. And Abraham bound his son Isaac, and placed him on the altar upon the wood, and Isaac stretched forth his neck upon the altar before his father. And Abraham stretched forth his hand to take the knife to slay his son as a burnt offering before the Lord. At that time the angels of mercy came before the Lord and spake to him concerning Isaac, saying, O Lord, thou art a merciful and compassionate king over all that thou hast created in heaven and in earth, and thou supportest them all. Give therefore ransom and redemption instead of thy servant Isaac, and pity and have compassion upon Abraham and Isaac his son, who are this day performing thy commands. Hast thou seen, O Lord, how Isaac the son of Abraham thy servant is bound down to the slaughter like an animal? Now therefore let thy pity be roused for them, O Lord. At that time the Lord appeared unto Abraham, and called to him from heaven, and said unto him, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou any thing unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God in performing this act, and in not withholding thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, a ram was caught in a thicket by his horns. That was the ram that the Lord God had created in the earth in the day that he made earth and heaven. For the Lord had prepared this ram from that day to be a burnt offering instead of Isaac. And this ram was advancing to Abraham when Satan caught hold of him and entangled his horns in the thicket, that he might not advance to Abraham in order that Abraham might slay his son. And Abraham, seeing the ram advancing to him, and Satan withholding him, he fetched him and brought him before the altar, and loosened his son Isaac from his binding. And he put the ram in his stead, and Abraham killed the ram upon the altar, and brought it up as an offering in the place of his son Isaac. And Abraham sprinkled some of the blood of the ram upon the altar, and he exclaimed and said, This is in the place of my son, and may this be considered this day as the blood of my son before the Lord. And all that Abraham did on this occasion by the altar, he would exclaim and say, This is in the room of my son, and may this day be considered before the Lord in the place of my son. And Abraham finished the whole of the service by the altar, and the service was accepted before the Lord, and was accounted as if it had been Isaac. And the Lord blessed Abraham and his seed on that day. And Satan went to Sarah, and he appeared to her in the figure of an old man, very humble and meek. And Abraham was yet engaged in the burnt offering before the Lord. And he said unto her, Dost thou not know all the work that Abraham has made with thine only son this day? For he took Isaac and built an altar, and killed him, and brought him up as a sacrifice upon the altar. And Isaac cried and wept before his father, but he looked not at him, neither did he have compassion over him. And Satan repeated these words, and he went away from her. And Sarah heard all the words of Satan, and she imagined him to be an old man from amongst the sons of men who had been with her son, and had come and told her these things. And Sarah lifted up her voice and wept and cried out bitterly on account of her son. And she threw herself upon the ground, and she cast dust upon her head, and she said, O oh, my son, Isaac my son, O oh, that I had this day died instead of thee. And she continued to weep, and said, 
It grieves me for thee, O my son, my son Isaac. Oh, that I had died this day in thy stead. And she still continued to weep and said, It grieves me for thee that I have reared thee and have brought thee up. Now my joy is turned into mourning over thee, I that had a longing for thee, and cried and prayed to God, till I bear thee at ninety years old, and now hast thou served this day for the knife and the fire to be made an offering. But I console myself with thee, my son, in its being the word of the Lord, for thou didst perform the command of thy God. For who can transgress the word of our God, in whose hands is the soul of every living creature? Thou art just, O Lord our God, for all thy works are good and righteous. For I also am rejoiced with thy word, which thou didst command, and whilst mine eye weepeth bitterly, my heart rejoiceth. And Sarah laid her head upon the bosom of one of her handmaids, and she became as still as a stone. She afterward rose up and went about making inquiries, till she came to Hebron, and she inquired of all those whom she met walking in the road, and no one could tell her what had happened to her son. And she came with her maidservants and menservants to Kiriath Arba, which is in Hebron, and she asked concerning her son, and she remained there while she sent some of her servants to seek where Abraham had gone with Isaac. They went to seek him in the house of Shem and Eber, and they could not find him, and they sought throughout the land, and he was not there. And behold, Satan came to Sarah in the shape of an old man, and he came and stood before her, and he said to her, I spoke falsely unto thee, for Abraham did not kill his son, and he is not dead. And when she heard the word, her joy was so exceedingly violent on account of her son, that her soul went out through joy. She died, and was gathered to her people. And when Abraham had finished his service, he returned with his son Isaac to his young men. And they rose up, and went together to Beersheba, and they came home. And Abraham sought for Sarah, and could not find her. And he made inquiries concerning her, and they said unto him, She went as far as Hebron to seek you both where you had gone, for thus she was informed. And Abraham and Isaac went to her to Hebron, and when they found that she was dead, they lifted up their voices and wept bitterly over her. And Isaac fell upon his mother's face and wept over her, and he said, O oh, my mother, my mother, how hast thou left me, and where hast thou gone, O oh, how, how hast thou left me? And Abraham and Isaac wept greatly, and all their servants wept with them on account of Sarah, and they mourned over her a great and heavy mourning.